Please join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for January 29th, 2018. We'll start with public comment period. Anybody in the audience wishing to make public comment? Yes, sir. You walk right in and make it. Good evening, Norm Silverdick, 70 Tymon Road, representing the uh, rational taxpayers of Hampton. <clears throat> there has been considerable uh, communication going back before Chairman Waddell and members of our organization, Jerry Zinoy, for one, and um, independently Richard Nichols regarding the wastewater treatment plant. We as an organization uh, are recognize the need to have the wastewater treatment plant capital expenditures that are most necessary be completed for the town and for its present and for its future requirements. We have a significant issue with the impact of the BODs caused by um, Smutty Nose, and I think it's been uh, concluded that Smutty Nose is the, is, has been the source of the increase in the BOD, and as a result, approximately six million of the 13.9 million capital expenditures attributable, attributable to them, and now that they are in bankruptcy, per se, and the assets are being auctioned off, the agreement between the town and Smutty Nose is going to wind up being null and void with any new buyer who buys the assets because I don't think anybody's going to step into the shoes and buy their uh, the liabilities that they own Provident Bank. So they're going to, whoever the new buyer is, if they buy the business in its entirety, will have to come to the town and renegotiate a uh, wastewater treatment uh, plant permit and we think that the taxpayer should not be paying for this. It should be passed on to the um, industrial user who's been perpetrating the spike in the BOD and the cost of this increase in capital expenditures. We can support a much smaller bond issue one that meets the, uh, the most urgent requirements of the wastewater treatment plant. We think that the whole area of the BOD spike needs to be analyzed carefully and then put in sort of a phase two approach. And then uh, so that the taxpayers can get behind this so that they can support the bill. And in our situation as a taxpayer, um, watchdog group. We are, again, I want to emphasize, we support the capital requirements for the wastewater treatment plant. We don't support spending money on something that will not become an immediate problem. Because with Smutty Nose, and I can't see anybody stepping up to fill their shoes and to, uh, to, uh, to buy the asset in the entirety without coming to the town. If they come to the town, then the town has the opportunity to negotiate a really good deal with them to pay for the cost. So I just want to uh, ask you, I know you're going to be discussing this tonight, to consider this very carefully and to uh, consider reducing the amount of the bonds so everybody can get behind it. If it continues to be at uh, $13.8 million, then uh, we will oppose it in, in as that amount of money. We'll, we will support a bill for a much smaller amount. I just want to let you know that. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Anybody else in the audience wishing to uh, make public comment? Bill, you're going to miss my comment? Oh, no, I got here. <laughs> Don't wait for me. Good evening. Uh, T Timothy Citizen Jones, 16 Dustin Avenue. Um, sorry to come here 
for two weeks in a row. I not, not, normally don't come here that frequently, as you may know, but I consider this issue very, very important. Um, I'm here to speak about tomorrow's deadline for filing a lawsuit to recover the town's costs attributed to activities on state-owned property. <clears throat> At this point, I think it's important to keep a few facts in mind. The deadline for tomorrow is artificial. It is not based on any legal or statutory requirement. <coughs> it is self-imposed and appears to exist solely as a management device. Beyond that, it appears to lack any tactical significance. Changing circumstances demand changing tactics. The governor's offer to personally engage in discussions is a significant change in the landscape. Plans are a great thing to have, right, Phil? But as anyone with military n understanding knows, once the battle begins, it's not the plan that wins the day. It is adaptability to changing circumstances that win the day. It is time to adapt. I suggest sending a letter to the governor indicating we are delaying filing in hopes of finding an amicable solution that is now in sight because of his involvement. Last week it was reported that I spoke against the lawsuit. I did not. I spoke of adapting. <clears throat> adapting to the historic change of a governor finally willing to engage in discussion with us. How many years have we been crying for that kind of engagement? Simply put, to delay the filing to enable such a discussion. Last week, emotions were too raw for many who felt affronted by the governor's means in communicating this new possibility. This gave rise to the very human reaction of venting on the perceived effrontery. Hopefully this week, with cooler heads prevailing, everyone can better see the town's best interest is served best by adapting, by extending our hand in agreement to honest and open discussions of the issues with an eye toward amicably reaching a fair deal. We are at a crossroads on this issue. I hope you will be circumspect in choosing the best road. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wishing to speak? Seeing none, we'll go to uh, announcements and community calendar. Regina? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I know the town manager is going to talk about it in his report, but I just want to remind everyone that this Saturday is the deliberative session. It starts at 8.30, and it's very important if we can have the whole town represented there. So if you could find a way to maybe come for part of the day or split the day up, it's really important that we get a good turnout for our town meeting on Saturday. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Bridal, I agree with what Regina said. Okay. Rick? Yeah, it's all... It's going to be a big day. Okay. Bill? I agree with uh, Rick, Rusty, and Regina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Consent agenda. Veteran credits for 2018. Parade and public gathering licenses. Hampton Half Marathon and 5K, March 4th, 2018. Eastern States 20-mile road race, March 25th, 18. I'll move the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Appointments. Chief Sawyer, Police Department, Departmental Upgrade, Update. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Move it up to Chief Chief. Well, deputy, Deputy. Well, it's better than what you called him the last time we were here. Wasn't I it? didn't tell uh, that. That deputy was dog. I did not call him that. There we go. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. I think I've given you each a copy of the. Uh, again, we usually use this quarterly update as a year in review, so that's what I've uh, done again this year, uh, this time around. So our current personnel, full time <laughs> staffing level is 34 sworn. In March, Officer William Cronin retired after 30 years of service to the department. I congratulate Bill on his retirement, and I'm happy to report he will remain with the department as a part-time officer. In April, Officer Robert Turcott retired as a result of injuries sustained in the line of duty. Bob began his career with the department in 
2004, and his camaraderie will be greatly missed. As you recall, a number of times uh, Bob was uh, making in the process of making an arrest when he was dragged by a car for a substantial distance and su sustained career-ending injuries. In May, Officer Jay Papalato and Officer Brandon Whitehead graduated from the 173rd New Hampshire Police Academy. <coughs> Officer Papalato resides in Salem, New Hampshire. Officer Whitehead resides in Hampton and is a graduate of Winnicott High School. Both officers began their careers as part-time officers with the department in 2015. In May, Officer Robert Kenyon was assigned to the Criminal Investigation Division. Detective Kenyon has served the department since 2007. Officers Jackson, Sorokins, and Robinson were assigned to summer corporals, successfully filling those positions from June until September. In July, part-time officer Justin LaDuke was appointed as a full-time officer and will attend and currently is attending the 175th New Hampshire Police Academy, commencing just started uh, two weeks ago. Officer Shannon Feely was assigned as assistant prosecutor in October. Our current part-time staffing level is very fluid, but right now, as we sit here today, it's 29. Nine new part-time officers joined the department, uh, department ranks in time for the summer season. The department had 14 part-time officers leave their positions in 2017. Ten of those officers were hired as full-time officers, including three with the Hampton Police Department. We currently have ten new, re uh, new officer recruits and training scheduled to, to come to work for the 2018 summer season. The department will be testing for the part-time officer applicants on Saturday, April 7th. That will be at Hampton PD. Anyone interested in testing can register online at HamptonPD.com. Uh, highlighting some civilian personnel, we've had a lot of movement there this year also, uh, in 17. In January, communication specialist Dan Necessity retired from the department after more than 11 years of service. Dan is a longtime resident of the town of Hampton and a distinguished veteran of the United States Army. We wish Dan the very best in his future endeavors. In April, Alessandra Lees assumed the duties of communication specialist. In August, Peter McKinnon retired from the department after more than 28 years of service as animal control officer. Peter's service and dedication to the town went well above his job description. Peter's incredible sense of humor will be greatly missed. In August, Anthony Parmesano assumed the duties of animal control officer. On September 18th, uh, the Hampton Police Department suffered a tragic loss with the sudden passing of Marsha Hess. Marsha was one of those figures that are the lifeblood of an organization. Beginning her career with the department in 1987, Marsha spent almost 30 years listening and guiding officers, prosecutors, attorneys, citizens, and the occasional chief of police through the travails of the justice system. In 2018, a plaque will be unveiled at the entry of the prosecutor's office, memorializing her contribution to the mission of the department and dedicating the pro pro uh, excuse me, prosecutor's office in her memory. In, no in November, Shannon Titcomb assumed the duties as prosecution secretary. Shannon came to the department after serving 15 years in the district court and circuit court systems in New Hampshire. Department operations. Recruitment and retention continue to be areas of focus and concern for the department and for law enforcement across the country. Each year it takes, an extraordinary, it takes extraordinary efforts by our training cadre to prepare our special part-time officers for the Summer Beach operation. Our supervisory personnel did an outstanding job leading and mentoring a team that provided for a safe and enjoyable summer season. In addition to our in-house training programs, the Hampton Police Department hosts some of the finest law enforcement training in the country in our training room. Many of these training sessions are attended by officers from around the United States and Canada. The prestigious list of training includes, but is not limited to, the FBI Leadership Series, which is five courses, the New Hampshire Police Standards and Training Part-Time Officer Academy, we conduct two sessions, and the New Hampshire State Police Civil Disorder Training, Social Security Administration Law Enforcement Training, and the New England Crisis Negotiators Association, and GSPCC Social Media Classes for Law Enforcement. Tragically, seven overdose deaths were investigated in Hampton in 2017. Patrol Division and the Criminal Investigation Division continue to work diligently with our local, state, and federal partners to combat the opiate epidemic the region has experienced. The department continues to have an officer assigned to a regional federal task force to help combat this issue. The department has continued with regional efforts working with the Portsmouth Police Department, the Greenland Police Department, and the Seabrook Police Department to form a seacoast region high-intensity drug intervention team utilizing grant funds from the New Hampshire Department of Safety, Safety a Law Enforcement Opiate Abuse Reduction Initiative. With a continuing shortage of officers in the department, continu uh, 
department. With the continuous short of officers, the department continued with the program of bringing in experienced officers from other agencies to augment our staffing levels on weekends and during special events. This has proven to be very helpful in maintaining order and providing for good traffic flow through the beach area. Special thanks to the New Hampshire State Police, Rockingham County Sheriff's Department, University of New Hampshire Police Department, Epping Police Department, Exeter Police Department, Green, uh, Greenland Police Department, and the Seacoast Emergency Response Team, who all provided personnel and equipment to assist during our busy summer season. I'd also like to thank the Seabrook Police Department for the continued cooperation and coordination of traffic control along the Ocean Boulevard corridor. The department also worked closely with the New Hampshire Liquor Enforcement Bureau, conducting compliance checks and coordinating efforts to reduce the level of over-service and enforcement of underage drinking laws. Additional thanks to the New Hampshire Department of Transportation, New Hampshire Homeland Security Emergency Management, and the New Hampshire National Guard 12th Civil Support Team. Special note of thanks to each of these agencies for the continued support and cooperation, making Hampton a great place to live and visit. Underneath we have our activity for uh, 2017 as a comparison to the same period of 2016. Uh, Go through these pretty quickly. Calls for service are down for four percent. Motor vehicle stops down six percent. Arrests were up twenty-one percent. DWIs up twenty-nine percent. Drug offenses down three percent. Total incidents reported down twelve percent. Offenses up four percent. Felonies down twenty-eight percent. Parking tickets down thirty-four percent, and accidents down twelve percent. And with that, I will take any questions from the board. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Chief. And sorry for the department and the town's loss of Masha Hess. I know she's going to to you guys. Um, I do have a question on the report. So you say 10 of those officers were hired as full-time officers, so only three of them, though, stayed in Hampton? Correct. The three, uh, we historically try to hire from our part-time ranks. Um, so we did have the three vacancies that occurred in 17, and so three... It's great to hire from within, but when you do that, it's, it's also a negative against your part-time rank. So three of the ten came to Hampton. I believe two went to Manchester, two went to UNH, one to Salem, two to the Massachusetts State Police, um, and off the top of my head, I can't recall the others. So unfortunately, we had seven leave the town. That is... Uh, right, I know. It's, yeah. it's what we're it's experiencing. Tip typical, we, I guess, right now. We do a great job training people. Uh, if we get a summer or two out of them, some of the people of the... 14 that left were also part of the nine that we hired. We, have act we actually had three of them that came to work for us and before they were uh, finished the year had been hired by other agencies. So we do a great job uh, recruiting, uh, <coughs> developing, but other agencies are well aware of that. When you walk into a, an interview and you say you work for Hampton PD, it usually puts you at the top of the pile. Right. So. But I wanted to say I had to call um, HPD today because I got home. I was driving back to my house this afternoon and there was a stranded dog on the road and I called the police station and you know they got Tony and he was literally there officer Palmazano was there in like 10 15 minutes made sure the dog was safe and uh you know I guess you guys have a way to figure out how the tag if they have a tag we can identify whether right. it be a vet tag or a town tag we can identify and he ended that. up being a neighborhood dog, but, you know, I wasn't sure, and I was nervous that he was going to get hit by a car, so I was very glad to see that the animal control officer was there very promptly to make sure the dog would it's be. It's a very busy area of the police department, and Peter yes. was always very busy, and Tony hasn't, uh, hasn't had any relief from that, that uh, tempo either. Well, I've actually so. never had to call the animal control officer before, so that was my first experience, so it was a good one. Thank you. I noticed the uh, <clears throat> school is looking for a second resource officer. Yes. <clears throat> How's that going to affect your department? We had discussions um, in a non-public session to talk about school safety as a whole. Mm -hmm. We talked about a number of issues, but one of the things that they, they've really determined is the physical presence of an officer is what they desire, and I, and I can't argue the logic of it, what they're trying to accomplish. Um, at one point, they were actually talking about two, uh, going back and forth, but it's as good as we are, and I like to brag about how good we are, we're also very expensive. You're talking $100,000 to outfit an officer when you start talking about wages, benefits, equipment, the training they have to go through. You're talking $100,000. I explained that we're just not in a position uh, to fund any portion of that within the department, that if they wanted this, they would have to fund it for the, the full 12-month period. And 
they thought that was uh, worth, a worthwhile endeavor, and I applaud them for taking a positive step. So it'll be a new position for you guys. Position. It'll be an additional <coughs> position. Correct. We will. That's what I was just making sure that we're not strapping you already with the, the you short staffed you are by taking another one and put it at the school. If we're going to put a new position on, that's perfect. Yeah, what we'll do is we'll find a veteran officer, usually like somebody with three or more years on, that will go into the schools as an SRO, and then we'll backfill that position with a new yeah. person. New that's person. fine. I just, I think it's great. I just want to make sure you're not robbing Peter to pay Paul. That was right now we're at that point where we couldn't do that unless we were adding personnel. We're kind of stretched a little thin right now. So, thank you. Mr. Griffin. Now, it sounds, I was looking at um, your report. It seems like um, um, many things are down, but um, the arrests are up. Yes. I think that's just the activity we're seeing. Um, a lot of that, as you can see, the DWIs are up. Um, a lot of that deals with alcohol, and, and I think I've been pretty clear since I took over as chief and one of the number one things I wanted to work on is the overservice of alcohol coming out of our establishments. I'm all for people having a good time. Uh, it's just when it gets to the point where they're falling into the roadways or getting behind the wheel that we, we have to take proactive measures. So I think a lot of those uh, increases that you see are a direct result of that type of uh, work we're doing. Yeah, I think that's very true. I, you know, it, is the town, would the town be responsible if uh, these people are hit by just because they, they didn't know they were going to be served so much and all of a sudden they get hit by a car crossing the street? Well, we can see, you know, we've seen recently where you can add the name of the town to any lawsuit you'd like is whether it, it prevails is the question. Um, no, I, I, unless they, we were shown to be completely negligent in, in our application of trying to enforce those things, I don't think anybody could ever make that argument. If you look at our budget and the number of resources we bring in primarily for that summer season, I think it would be hard to make that argument that we're being negligent. So, no, I wouldn't think it would come back on the town. I'm not aware of any community ever being successfully sued in that type of scenario, and it usually comes back to the licensee. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Deputy Hobbs. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chief. Uh, Deputy, thank you for the uh, brief. Uh, Chief, would you care to uh, offer comment on the legislation that I saw you uh, um, participating in a discussion in Concord about? Uh, well, you, you can explain it. I think you know what I'm talking about. There, there is a uh, current Senate bill, and I'm sorry off the top, I can't remember what number it was, but uh, it deals with retirees that come back to work um, in the employment of a, a member of the retirement system. So in the town of Hampton, we have nine retirees working as part-time officers. These are folks that either work for us or other police departments that we now utilize in a part-time capacity. These positions that they hold have always been part-time, uh, and so it's not really what they were trying to stop. There is a move afoot that is very concerned about communities that take a full-time position and make it a part-time position. Um, and that's really what's caused the stir lately about the retirement system. Um, they talk about it. It's Right now, it's really a, uh, the director of the retirement system two years ago talked about this issue. It's, re it's a negligible issue. Uh, it is an impact, but it doesn't have any significant financial impact on the system. But it's the, I think it's more the appearance of it that bothers some people. So we were at risk of potentially, if some of the changes that they had proposed were made, losing nine people. Uh, overnight, nine experienced people out of the 29 we have. That would have been uh, devastating to this agency. I don't, I'm not quite sure how would we recover from that, uh, considering what, you know we get assets from the state police, but they're in the same position we are. They're struggling to, to fill their roles, and we're not seeing the presence that we used to see. Um, there was a compromise uh, that came forward that. It used to be that you weren't supposed to work more than 32 hours. If you did, then there was a cap for a five-month period, and then you were done working for the year. That seemed to have worked for everybody, but again, the, the appearance of people. So what they've come up with now is there's going to be a cap of 1,300 hours. Now, that's a soft cap. If an employee, a part-time employee, a <coughs> retiree, was to exceed the 1,300 hours, he has a max cap of 1,600 hours. In any of those hours between 1,300 and 1,600, 
he would have to pay a stipend of 3% to the retirement system. The community that was employing this individual would also have to pay a 5% stipend. It's one of those things, uh, it's quite frankly, I don't know why they were messing with it, but they were, but it's a compromise that, that I think is manageable. A 3% stipend for 300 hours a year and a 5% for the employer is not catastrophic. Uh, it's better than paying the 29 point whatever we're paying for a full-time retiree right now and the employee, employee paying 11.4. So it's still a bit of a savings on both sides. I'm, I'm not quite sure why they're making any change at all uh, if the director of the system is telling us it's negligible, but that's the direction we went in. There was a number of us up there testifying before the Senate committee on that. I believe right now it's in finance. It was the last stop. I don't know where it is in particular at this point. If that takes place, I'm not quite sure. Originally, they were talking about a January 1 of 19 initiation on that, but then that changed upon signature, so I'm not sure what the timetable or if it will survive the process. I haven't really uh, followed up on that lately. So, Thank you. Appreciate it, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, <clears throat> DWI up 29%. Is that, as you said, because of better surveillance, or is that because of more drinking? Um, I... I think you can attribute a little bit to both. If you look at, you know, what we're experiencing down in Hampton, you know, that renaissance, when we talked about the entertainment uh, ordinance, I, I highlighted that you know, in the last 10 years, $260 million of growth have gone into that little stretch of sand down there. That's quite a bit, and I'm sure that's, that's a low number. Um, I think the accommodations have improved. I think the entertainment venues have improved, and I think that's making Hampton a bigger draw. And with that, we are really focusing, again, when I first took over as chief, I, you, you could see it coming with the, with the growth that we have to address those issues. Or if, if it's left unfettered, <coughs> we're going to have a lot of tragedies, and we're really trying to avoid that. So I think it's a little bit of both. Super. Parking tickets down 34%. I can, that's, well, here's the problem. You, re, you, you rob Peter to pay Paul. We had a, uh, a great guy, uh, Jim Mills, was our parking enforcement guy. And remember last year I came and asked to create a part-time evidence technician's position. Mm -hmm. uh, he is a former, he's a retired postmaster. Those are the most organized people in the world, and I couldn't think of anybody better suited to organize the evidence room and handle that. So we lost him in the parking area, uh, but our evidence room is uh, looking as good as it's ever looked. Uh, we're going to try to backfill with a couple more bodies this summer to try to make up for some of the, uh, the loss of Jim's efforts. But it was one man. Okay. That made the difference. Wow, huge. Uh, and the other thing is, I was watching the news tonight before I came, and they were talking about the federal budget, I think, and they were talking about a cut in the drug enforcement that would bother the coordination. We went through that um, last year. There was an issue of the budget where we were kind of hanging in the wind as to whether the option we have on that task force, he's in an undercover capacity, he works cases throughout the New England region. What that does for the town of Hampton is certainly when we have a case here and we try to track back the opiates and the source, we go to the top of the pile because we have somebody on the task force. What it also gives us is the asset forfeitures. They were so concerned about the budget at one point that they were going to freeze the asset forfeiture program. Now, I would have probably kept our officer on there because I still think it's a worthwhile endeavor, but the funneling of the money from the asset forfeiture, our portion of it, would have ceased. These are the type of things when you get involved with these uh, regional task forces, either under the state or the feds, these other issues have an effect on those. What that effect you're talking about, it, it, that remains to be seen. I don't think it will ever close down completely these task forces, the amount of work they're able to do. So we haven't had those. We haven't really – we meet uh, quarterly with the uh, DEA coordinator up in Portsmouth, uh, all the chiefs that have officers on that particular task force. He has not called for a meeting based on, on that news report, so right now I'm not that worried about it. It's kind of, let's wait and see. Good. Thank you. Anybody else have anything else? No. Thank, Thank you very much for your report. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. Uh, I think we had one other item. Uh, oh, I yeah, apologize. I meant to be in here a few weeks ago, but uh, we've the had penguin a couple things going. The Penguin Plunge. We have the annual Penguin Plunge coming up this weekend. Uh, it's the same footprint that you always see. It's going to be Saturday. It's going to be the high school uh, group. And then the uh, traditional Penguin Plunge uh, is going to be on Sunday. We plan on shutting down Ocean Boulevard at H Street uh, to D Street around 9 o'clock. 
Uh, we have a permit from the state to uh, keep it closed till 3 o'clock. So what we're looking for is permission to reroute the traffic down on town roads down 8th Street and run Ashworth Ave as a two-way street from 8th Street all the way to D Street uh, behind the casino. Uh, this is the same pattern we've had for the last probably 12 years, probably the last dozen years. Yeah. I'll make the motion to the chief. All in favor? Do you have it? But that's all we have for you the tonight. The poor teenagers going on Saturday, right? The high school kids? Yeah, they're actually easier to handle. <laughs> they that's that's going to be a cold day, <laughs> and Sunday's going to be a much warmer day. Sunday, whenever whenever a, a certain sports team happens to make the big game, oh, it, yeah. it, it's the beginning of the party, so it's a little bit, bit more of a handful. Mm. So. <laughs> we just ask when you're coming down there, there still is a uh, open container water, and uh, try to be responsible while you're imbibing and <laughs> get, get some place safe before you let it really fly loose. All right. And, uh, hopefully everybody has a good time. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you much. Thank you, gentlemen. Next, and I hope I pronounced the r name correctly, Noah Terracinia. Uh, Terracina. Terracina. Okay. Uh, Eagle Scout Project for John T's Lane. Welcome. Thank you. Just have a handouts for you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Noah Terracina. I am a life scout here in Hampton, New Hampshire. I'm part of Troop 177. I'm coming here tonight to uh, get your approval uh, to start working on my Eagle Scout Leadership Service Project. Uh, my goals uh, tonight are to uh, help and inform you uh, about my project and uh, to in obtain a, a signature uh, for uh, my project proposal. Um, before I continue, I have been uh, told that uh, Mr. Bridal here is uh, familiar with the Eagle Scout Service Projects. Uh, however, if there are uh, any, one of, any of you here who are uh, unfamiliar with the projects or have any questions, I can answer those now before I continue. Anybody have any questions on the Eagle Scout Projects? Negative, Mr. Chairman. No, Thank you. We, we've had many of them yep. before, and we're looking forward to yours. Thank you. Uh, so my proposal is to uh, improve the uh, parking at uh, Jaunty's Lane. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with uh, Jaunty's Lane, uh, Jaunty's Lane is a trail uh, located off of uh, Barber Road uh, here in Hampton. Um, as you see on the uh, map on the first page of the uh, packet, uh, it's marked in uh, red. Uh, Jaunty's Lane uh, leads to a large uh, land trust uh, that is ma mainly forested and uh, filled with uh, trails for hiking, biking, and uh, hunting. Uh, my plan is to make these uh, public lands uh, more accessible uh, to the public uh, by creating safe parking off of the road uh, for people to park to access these public lands, and if allowed, uh, to refurbish the gate that is currently there. Um, this project is needed at Jaunty's Lane because of the increased popularity and interest um, into the public lands. Um, although there is another trailhead, uh, White's Lane, uh, that goes into the um, lands back there. Uh, Jaunty's Lane does see um, a lot more uh, traffic. Uh, currently, there is no designated uh, parking location um, at Jaunty's Lane. Uh, most people end up uh, parking partially in the street, um, in the private properties around the, ga around the uh, trailhead, and uh, blocking the gate uh, that is in uh, front of the trailhead. Um, in 2006, uh, a fellow scout and a friend of mine uh, from the troop, uh, Charlie Casperoni, uh, completed his project um, that involved more uh, work in the um, land trust. Uh, his project involved installing a kiosk at White's Lane and improving a trail connecting uh, White's Lane to the Victory Garden. Um, his project, as well as mine, are uh, hoping to expand the accessibility to the uh, public lands uh, back in Hampton. Um, I have been uh, working with uh, Mrs. Uh, Dion of the uh, Conservation Commission 
uh, for a little while now, and I've uh, been meeting with the uh, Conservation Commission as well, and we've uh, come up with a uh, plan uh, for the uh, project. Um, if you see on the uh, next page, uh, I have drawn out layout of what the uh, dra draft uh, that we came up for uh, the plan is to uh, clear out uh, the side of the road uh, there and um, level it with the road, making it easier for cars to safely uh, park out of the road. Um, <coughs> this would provide uh, room for two cars to safely uh, perpendicular park off the road. And I would also like to be able to uh, refurbish uh, the gate that is there. Uh, we've talked to a DPW, uh, and they have agreed uh, to remove any trees uh, that would be in the way of the uh, parking plan uh, to make room uh, for my project. Uh, the Conservation Commission has uh, approved of uh, the DPW doing this and uh, for the project proposal. Um, and in the page uh, three um, is their uh, paper of uh, support uh, for my project. Um, <coughs> they. Uh, approved again of uh, my project and have uh, referred me uh, to uh, talk to you guys uh, to get your final uh, approval for my project. Uh, so at this time, do you have any uh, questions that I might we'll be around to the board? Uh, no, very good presentation. Um, Mr. Welch, is there anything that it seems like he's done everything he needs to do? We're all set. Just needs more I have approval. no questions. Sounds like a good project. Let's see. Excellent project. Yeah, very ambitious, and I can't wait to park there. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Noah, that's one of the best presentations uh, that I've heard in my six years here, and I want to thank you. And uh, if there's no age limit, I would encourage you to go upstairs and see the town clerk and uh, <laughs> file for selectmen. There's an election coming in March. Thank you for that. <laughs> and I know the uh, I know the board uh, in the town will do anything in terms of your execution phase for publicity on our town website and anything we can do. Uh, for that fine project you let us know and thanks so much All right, appreciate thank it you. no excellent <coughs> excellent uh do we need to take a vote to approve it yes sir i'll okay. make a motion i'll second okay all in favor so it's unanimous you have our approval and good luck with the project thank you so much thank uh, you i just have uh, two last uh yep. questions Go ahead. Uh, before i leave um after my uh project is uh, complete and finished uh who should i uh, see to get the uh, final uh approval upon the completion DPW of my director. project. DPW director. DPW. Okay. And um, if any questions or com uh, problems of r may arise uh, during my project, uh, who should I see to talk about? Contact the town manager's office, yes? Yes. And so, Mr. Well, be happy. To, we'll be happy to take care of those problems. And you can get the phone number for that right on the uh, <laughs> website? Okay. Or can you give them the phone number? I don't have it off the top of my head. I don't head. call myself, so I never yeah, yeah. memorize it. <laughs> 926-6766. Extension 3. You may know. Sorry, one more time. 926-6766. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great project. Yes. Christy Pulliam, purchase orders carried forward. Thank you. should have all received in your packet this afternoon or in your mailboxes this afternoon a packet from me it's um basically contains the final purchase order list for 2017 i'd come in i think two weeks ago and kind of started to lay the groundwork for what we were going to be bringing forward we have since paid a lot of 2017 bills so i've been able to reduce it i think the purchase order list when i was first here was like 800 and something now it's down to $589,244.53. So we're still seeing 17 bills come in, and those are getting processed. 
So the first sheet breaks down uh, breaks down the purchase orders. Like I said, there's five hundred eighty nine thousand two hundred forty four dollars and fifty three cents of that amount. Though two hundred thirty six thousand five hundred twenty nine is from Fund Twenty Seven for the new ambulance. So we're looking to bring forward the from the general fund the three hundred fifty two thousand seven hundred fifteen dollars and fifty three cents. And then underneath that, you, there's a breakdown of all the Warren articles and their balances as of 1231 of 2017. I can read through them all if you guys would like. There's a link, quite a lengthy list. It totals $1,713,781. I put all the lapse dates there so, uh, for all the non-lapsing articles so you can see that they are still articles that haven't lapsed and can be brought forward into the new fiscal year. So you're looking at $2,000,000 three thousand nine hundred one dollars and fifty three cents of carry forwards the largest ones there are uh, preliminary design revitalization at two hundred ninety seven thousand and then five hundred and thirty three thousand for the grist mill dam uh, grist mill pond dam and six hundred thirteen thousand two hundred twelve for lafayette road but that it's going to end up now that it was bonded in january we'll end up running that through as a bond but we since the bond sale didn't take place until January, we were tracking all the expenditures just through the Warren article. So that uh, will come back into like a do-to, do-from account. And I also did point out on here that there were three different Warren articles that did uh, lapse or are finished, and so the money will go back into the unassigned fund balance. One of them was... Uh, Article 24 from 2016 for a utility revaluation of 150,000. Uh, Article 26 from 2016 for a recreation infrastructure at $5,598. And Article 23 from 2017 for household ha hazardous waste at $5,874. So that will go back to the unassigned fund balance. I don't know if you guys have questions on that. You also had the purchase order list. Fred and I have been through it with department heads and stuff. So, Regina. So just <coughs> clarification. So the three hundred fifty-two thousand. That probably is going to continue to change a little bit because you're still paying seventeen bills. No, that will be the final number because the board has to vote to bring forward a number. So now any seventeen okay. um, purchase orders that come in and any bills that were from 17 related to purchase orders will be processed in 18 against the purchase orders. Okay. But it was that's why it's dropped since I was here the last time for that exact reason that you just gave though. Because okay. we are still running like 17 batches. Now we're, we need to move forward. So that's right in with the estimate you had, right? Right. For, yeah. Yep. For All right, orders. great. Very good job. Thank you. Rusty, all set. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Negative. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Director. How does that compare to other years? The amount we're right in there. Right. I think last year was 500 and something. Also, I don't know how much was from other funds last year, though. But I think it's right in line with uh, prior years for the purchase order carry forward. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, we need a vote on that. Yes, we yeah. do. On separately on each one, or or you do it collectively. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Good. And I also just want to point out, I did not uh, generate my final end of year financials because we have a couple more bills that I wanted to run through this week. So prior to the deliberative, because I know a lot of people out there have been asking and looking for them, I, at the, by the end of this week, I will be issuing my unaudited 2017 financials. So I will email those to you and put them on the website prior to the deliberative on Saturday. Great. Thank you. So Thank just you. a little heads up there and uh, I did on preliminary look it looks like we're going to have about 270,000 in under expenditures and about 390,000 in um, revenues that were higher than what we had estimated at the time of the tax rate setting so those are just to give you guys an idea of where we are at so very good okay thank you very much thank you have a good night thank you, thank you. So, approval of minutes January 16th 2018. I'll make a motion. Second. Uh, all in favor? Abstain. Three to one. Uh, four to one. Uh, January 22nd, 2018. Non-public minutes. I'll move. Second. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. 
Okay. Town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'll repeat this again, although it's been said, I think, three times this evening already. Deliberative session, 2018 annual town meeting will be held this coming Saturday, February 3rd, 2018, starting at 8.30 a.m. in the auditorium of the Winnicott High School. Please be present. Wednesday, January 24th, 2018, the first day for candidates to file for uh, open elected positions. Friday, February 2nd, 2018 is the last day to file for the declaration of candidacy for uh, open elected positions. Please see the town clerk's office if you would like to file. Property owners, veterans, elderly, and others who may qualify for exemptions under RSA 72 a portion for, uh, from your portion of your property taxes should contact the assessor's office before April 1st. Please remember to remove your trash and recycling carts from the roadways and sidewalks after the contents have been collected. <coughs> it's very difficult for the plow operators to maneuver around them if they're left in the street. The town has received numerous complaints regarding dog owners failing to pick up their dog waste, especially along Island Path. By town ordinance, you are required to pick up after your dog. Mr. Chen, we have a couple of other things. We had um, this past week, the fire department issued a blasting permit for number one, Timber Swamp Road, uh, for work being done down there. It looks as if the, the note that I have is that uh, sometime next week, this coming week, uh, the, the fire department will be notified by the blasting company that the blasting will actually take place. That includes drilling operations in addition to the blasting. Um, if you have any information you want, please feel free to call the fire department and, and request uh, information regarding the operation of the blasting permit. Uh, we also have a received a, a letter from the State Department of Transportation. Um, you'll recall earlier in the year, uh, actually last year, uh, they had worked from the Massachusetts, New Hampshire state line on Route 1 all the way up to uh, Hampton and they had repaved and, and rebuilt part of the roadway. Uh, they are going to start working uh, for a re rehabilitation of pavement uh, that will enter primarily pavement preservation and common roadway appearance and maintenance of 11 sections of roadway spanning 16.7 miles through 10 municipalities Load, and they're going to start at uh, the, in the town of Hampton, New, Ham, uh, on New Hampshire, Route 101 west and east uh, from 0 .03 miles east of Toll Farm Road, uh, extending easterly 2.9 miles basically to Highland Avenue and Brown Avenue. That, that's part of this rehabilitation program. They'll be uh, doing new, new guardrails. They'll be doing paving. They'll be doing uh, shoulder work and... Uh, Please be observant because they're going to be out there working this summer, which is going to cause, I'm sure, some problems. That's it, sir. Questions? I have a question in regards to uh, what Mr. Silberdick in the wastewater treatment plant, the bond, the amount of it. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, last Thursday, the town manager, myself, and the chairman attended the meeting at the police station for people that had questions. And it was brought up about, you know, making the bond perhaps lower, taking some of the 6.6 .6 that has to do with the aeration and lowering that amount. <clears throat> but there was a statement made here tonight that it was determined that the excess BOD was attributed to Smutty Nose. But talking to Chris Jacobs, it doesn't seem like that has actually been determined yet. I think that's correct. I did talk to Chris today. And <clears throat> BOD is a constant problem. It originates from various locations. Uh, to give you an example, um, you take a rainy day in the summertime at the beach, everybody goes down and does laundry at the laundromat, BOD goes through the roof because of the discharges that normally come from those types of operations. Uh, I've suggested, and the director has suggested, that uh, we do testing in various areas of the town to find out where the prevalent BODs are coming from. Part of it's coming from smutty nose. There's no question about that. They have a high BOD content. But they've also been trucking away their BOD. 
which means that uh, they're within the parameters of the state and local permit on the amount of VOD they can discharge. Uh, they messed up a few times, but then again, we've messed up a few times. It's just a matter of uh, what's operating and what's not operating correctly at the time. So nothing runs perfectly all the time. The VOD is a problem. Uh, and yes, we can regulate it. Yes, other folks can regulate it. And yes, we can do a lot to prevent further VOD buildup. Okay. All right. Thanks for that clarification. Mr. Bartle. All set. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> now, will, when that money nose is auctioned off, will the people have to, I don't think they ever really fulfilled their obligation to uh, do what needed to be done there. Am I correct? They were required uh, to put in a pretreatment operation. You're correct. Mm -hmm. They did not. They actually uh, went to purchase one, and uh, the company they purchased from actually went bankrupt. They'd already paid them, so the money was lost. And uh, the result was that they had to truck their BOD, excess BOD, away from the site, which they were doing. And they were taking it to another facility that actually wanted the BOD in order to properly process their waste. Uh, whoever comes in is going to have to negotiate a brand new permit. No question about that. And I suspect that they're going to have to comply with the original requirements, which is to build a tree treatment facility, depending upon what they're going to try to discharge. Oh, that's good. Um, the other thing is, I just was trying to get my email, because there was an email in there from Mark Gerald about um, the delay on the lawsuit. But somehow, when you press the something else comes up <coughs> instead of his uh, uh, whatever he wanted to say. So I just, uh, I think that we're being fair to mention this. I think it's right on the top, the email. Well, it doesn't come on the, on the, on the Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm just, I think it was going to be a non-public. Well, I think that some of this needs to be mentioned to the public okay. because it's uh, on the 31st and that's two days from now and I think if we know that it's not going to be filed for a certain reason, we should be doing something about it rather than letting Mr. Uh, Jones think that he's stopping it. I agree with Rick. <laughs> so, oh, I'm sorry. I think we need to talk about it. Yeah, if we if we all know that it's not going to happen until the 14th. And okay, could, could we do one thing? Could we stay in the wastewater and then we'll move on? Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Bean. Are you done with town manager? Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Welch, um, Mr. Silberdick represented, and, and I don't check my town email that regularly, quite frankly, because uh, I'm here all the time. Um, there was a, an email traffic going back and forth. Are, are we being copied on that? And I don't know if that's true, but he, Mr. Mr. Silberdick said there's email traffic going from some 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 people about. What I he believe discussed. it's going to the Department of Public Works, okay. and they're asking specific questions, <clears throat> and those questions, they're trying to answer those questions. Okay. Because yeah, may I, well, we get answers. Yep, yep. You're going There's to get them. Jim. May, okay. I, may I, I? There's been traffic going back and forth between Mr. S uh, Mr. Silvedick one time to me, Mr. Nichols, myself, and Mrs. Zanoy, and at that uh, copy has been copied to the to board. Us. Okay. And also, Mr. I think Mr. Zanoy, I think all of his are CC'd to everybody. So, yes, there has been, and anything that has been discussed was discussed in the public meeting on Thursday. It was all about the At wastewater the statement that Regina just brought up, and that was all discussed. It was all public uh, questions that they had. Right. And they've had some, some, we've just gone back and forth about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and thank you, Mr. Chairman, for that clarification. And so where are we for the public's knowledge? Is, is the 13-8 in play for a, from, from uh, Public Works after their analysis and yours? Or are we moving forward on that, or are we going to talk about this later on tonight? Well, the $13,880,000 uh, $13, <coughs> is, in fact, the warrant article to be placed before town meeting. Okay. Uh, I have instructed the Department of Public Works to look at the BOD issue to determine whether or not um, the aeration system 
needs to be built given the current status of things uh, as as we go on and they're working with the engineers to in fact effort that that item right now um, I believe it was mentioned this evening that we should abandon the effort to increase the aeration system uh, if we do that the current aeration system still has to be taken down and and the internal mechanisms cleaned and, and, and replaced as as should be done and there needs to be a generator purchased in order to run the system it's not now connected to auxiliary power when that's when the power goes down if it's for any period of time basically there's no aeration we just super chlorinate we just dump tons and tons of material in there to kill the, the bacteria at the same time we're killing what we term the good bugs in the system that in fact clean the system up on, an, on a regular basis with the aeration on. So we have to be careful that, that we just can't take everything in the aeration system and throw it away and not do it because it's not going to work that way and, and it's, it's, a, it's a dangerous situation. You could discharge improperly to the, to the marsh, which we're not going to do under any circumstances. If we were to, for instance, let's say we took the $2 million away for the construction of concrete, and that's just a off the top figure. Um, and we decided to put that on. In three to four years, five years, we're looking at another $13.8 million to do work at the plant. To add that $2 million on is going to add another, well, actually, it'd be more than that at, at the time because the cost will go up. Uh, we're talking then $15, $16, $17 $17 million. So we have to balance this. There's a need to balance the cost and, and, and the results and so forth. Um, yes, it, part of it can be eliminated, but you have to understand that it's going to come back and cost more. So we have to look at that very carefully. What's it going to cost? What do we need to do with the existing finances that the town may approve? And if you, if you, and I know that a very few people have gone down for the tour of the facility. I'm very familiar with it. I think the board members are too. Uh, if you walk in there, you can see that we have equipment that's not been replaced and is currently operating 24-7. 365 um, that's been there since 1970. Uh, I'd, I'd like to talk to anybody who can run their car 24-5, 365 uh, since 1970 and it's still running because it isn't. Uh, you need to replace and replenish the systems that are there on a regular basis and, and keep them maintained. Some of those systems are badly corroded. Some of them need to be really worked on seriously. The electrical systems in the building need to be replaced if we don't, we're going to end up with a problem. Now is not the time to be experimenting with that problem. If something goes that's worth three or four million dollars, we're in serious trouble. Okay. The town, the uh, deliberative is when? It is this coming Saturday. Okay. At 8.30 so, a.m. it starts. Thank you. Now, there's discussions about um, a delta in this, that um, these great uh, public interested citizens like Mr. Silberdick and the Taxpayers Association bring forward very eloquently and very politely. So we're basically at the 11th hours of board. Are we, uh, because that's what we voted on, going into 13-8 uh, is a board um, in, in our, our unanimous vote? Uh, or are, based on what I'm hearing, is there any change in that? Because I'm still at 13-8, and I, I, I go with that, and I, I, I guess that's what I'm asking at this 11th hour. Go around. Well, I would say I would be at 13.8 until we hear more from Wright Pierce and Public Works about, I know they're going to be working on something this week, correct? They're working very hard and efforting it right now. We're hoping to have figures sometime late tomorrow. Because I think just cutting it and not knowing what exactly we're cutting <coughs> could actually do more harm than it would good. And I, I think you're right. Unless we have the, right. the facts and figures of what, what they're specifically looking that they don't absolutely have to do. I think we still have to be at that 13 yeah. But I don't think we can let the rational taxpayers of Hampton run the town. Okay. Okay. So I, you, yep. Um, yes, Mr. Chair. I haven't been able to. And, and I still want to come back. I've got other things. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Um, yeah. I, I think after Thursday night's meeting, and I think they had some very good points, and I don't think we're letting the rational taxpayers necessarily run the town, but I think they had some very good points because mm -hmm. they had some very good figures that it wasn't until 2014 that the BOD went skyrocketing. And if you look at the <coughs> figures, and that was CC'd to everybody, I'm pretty sure, yep. that it went up 
almost in 2000, whenever they came on board, to 180 percent at one point, to 90 percent, to 96. And then it dropped down this year when we started making them truck it out. But it had gone up considerably. And I think we really have to take into consideration whether the BOD is the necessary problem right now. And I agree, we can't cut back, just say we're going to cut back in order to get a bond passed. But I do think if Wright Pierce and the department comes up with the fact that, yeah, after looking at the, the, the facts and the figures and the graphs, that maybe we can cut back, I think it's, I think it's crucial we get this thing passed. I totally agree that we should cut back if we can cut back, but I don't right. like the way it's presented here that we should do this because of the rational taxpayer of Hampton. That turns my stomach. Yeah, well, I don't I think, don't I don't think, think we're doing it because of that. I think Wright Pierce had some agreement at, at the Thursday, the Thursday meeting. But that's Regina, Wright if I'm Pierce. Misinterpreting? It, no, I think you're interpreting correctly, but I think yeah. the other thing that Mr. Welch mentioned, which is very important, to save $2 million now on a $13.8 million bond, so that brings it down to 11.8. Well, we're still eventually going to need that $2 million. Unless nothing ever happens in the town of Hampton again, no one builds, no one does anything. We're going to eventually need it. And prior to 2014, <coughs> I'll be honest with you, I didn't go on a tour of the wastewater treatment plant, but judging by what I seen a couple months ago, it needed a lot of that aeration work back in 2014 before Smutty Nose was there. So I don't, I'm not comfortable with placing all the BOD blame on Smutty Nose, and I don't think from what I've heard from the Director of Public Works that he is either. It's needed the work for the whole 14 years. No, I, I agree with that. I agree with that it needs the work. I'm just saying how much. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So it appears that we're at 13.8. There may be a delta. There may be a, a, a discussion at the meeting. I would request, um, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Welch, that uh, finance provide uh, what that delta would look like if there is a reduction uh, in the uh, annual payment for a bond if it does uh, – uh, diminish in its scope. And I don't support that change, but I think that's good information. Over 20 years, we're talking uh, an issue like this, and I would say uh, constructively, um, and I want to come back to Smutty Nose, uh, if somebody does come into that uh, facility and there's a hundred and so jobs there and there's someone that is, is taking that over and they, they operate something and there's a mechanical failure there and it's the middle of summer, uh, the scenario is uh, that they have to shut down uh, they have to not have people work. I would think, if not necessarily. Well, but I'm saying that's 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 a threat. If it's we're if we're going to have if we're going to have the stringent requirements that Mr. Silberdick rightfully uh, and appropriately uh, addresses, um, that's an issue. So I, I would like the, the finance to uh, uh, provide those figures, and I think there should be a uh, a point, and certainly anybody can do anything, which is their right uh, on the floor in the town. Uh, but there's a there's a point where. As a body of selectmen, uh, we, we go in at 13-8 or we make a change. And happy to meet at the chairman's pleasure or yours, but uh, right now I'm at 13-8. And, and uh, I wanna, I've got some other questions for you. I'd like to <coughs> see, as before we present the article, make the changes if they can be made. If they can't be made, then let them fight it out on the floor. We, we are planning on, we, we are efforting that information now to see what it looks like with Wright Pierce. If, if, for instance, aeration can be eliminated, what will that cost be? What can be taken out of the budget? What can't be taken out of the budget because of other constraints? I think one of the things that people need to remember is the town will not pay 24 percent of this bond. The state of New Hampshire is going to pay 20 percent of it, and the town of Rye is going to pay 4 percent of it at the minimum. So 24 percent of this bond is being paid by others in addition to everything else. Uh, my, my real concern is uh, that when we get down the road three or four years, we're going to pancake two bonds on top of the, in essence, two bonds on top of the town, another $13 million plus an additional two, three, or four million, depending on what the aeration is going to cost if it's taken out. So we need to be very careful about how we plan that, what the aeration does for us, what it does for us over the long run, and how much money it would either save or not safe for the town. So that you have those figures probably by tomorrow or the next day. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, anything else on the wastewater? Okay. The second issue is uh, with the uh, unfortunate uh, um, uh, auction or whatever is going on with Smutty Nose. Uh, we and Esquire is here uh, uh, provided uh, aid in, in terms of that. Uh, 
project when it was going in. We were very helpful, and very supportive. Uh, and now that it's gone into a uh, um, an auction, and I, I'm not an expert, I don't know if it's in bankruptcy, uh, is the town protected in all of its uh, interests as a result of this auction in terms of any obligations with that corporation um, or any uh, um, agreements that we had? And I would like I would like to make sure that we do that. And I don't need an answer tonight, but I just wanted to orient the board right. and uh, get a legal opinion on it. Thank you. Were you, were you going to give something on that? Uh, th there are uh, there have been several aspects in which uh, the town participated. One was a economic development authority grant, which involved the extension of the sewer line up Toll Farm Road, and uh, the town was basically the sponsor of the grant. Half the funding was coming from the federal government, and the other half was coming from Smutty Nose. I believe all of the Smutty Nose contributions were made. That's my understanding, yes. So that was uh, a number, several years ago. So that those contributions were made and the grant was closed out. Uh, a second aspect had to do with whether or not there would be uh, any issue about uh, current use taxation. And I asked the tax assessor that very question, whether that there was any outstanding issue in that regard, and he indicated that there was not. But you're correct, Mr. Bean, that we ought to check into whether or not there's any other loose ends. Thank you so much. And then a, a, a wrap up on that that concept, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, is going forward. If there is a new buyer of that property, uh, what is the board's position in terms of the BOD? Because that was never satisfied by the uh, the folks that used to run it or um, formerly ran it. And uh, what is the position? So uh, this board is firm prior to any purchase about our conditions uh, that they must uh, satisfy in terms of the board. Uh, in terms of BOD and uh, what we'll allow, and, and that way, uh, it's a it's a clear transaction, and everybody knows what their responsibilities are and their obligations to the town, which were unmet um, by this this prior venture. But going forward, I think it's important uh, for this town and anyone that's per, uh, coming in to buy that that uh, we make sure that the new owner, which may be Provident Bank uh, or anyone else, knows that that is going to be a requirement. I think that needs to be made loud and clear. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question. <coughs> they owe back taxes? Yes, they yes. do. 158000 <coughs> That's my understanding. Yeah. We're second in line, or we? Uh, generally, taxes are first. I'm not sure what, what, uh, who else might be first, but we're ahead of the banks, that's for sure. Yeah. What, we're ahead of the banks? Wasn't yes, there? Yes. Yeah. So, that, so whomever sent, there was an email sent? We are the primary recipient okay. of taxes. So we are the primary? We're the primary. All right, so anything that comes out of the auction goes the to us first. The only thing that first. could change that would be a federal bankruptcy court. Okay, okay. <coughs> and, there, and, and there is a protection in the bankruptcy court for, for taxes that are due. Good. I'd also like to talk about this letter here before we talk about the deliberative session. What letter is that? It's the one that talks about that there's septic systems leaking into Northampton. Go ahead. I, I'm it, not... In here, it says that uh, Northampton has been, um, uh, they have found high fecal contain counts in the marsh within the waters that pass under Appledore Avenue in Northampton. This has been an ongoing issue with them for several years, and their investigation led them to identify homes in their community that were discharging untreated affluent into the marsh. After they removed these sources within Northampton, they still had an issue with high fecal counts, which led them to obtain water samples that point to an unidentified problem within Hampton. Having the town of Northampton notify us of this situation and showing reasonable data that the issue may lay within the town of Hampton forces me as director, Chris Jacobs, to implement certain processes that and procedures to identify and possibly eliminate these potential sources of pollution. In the spring, when temperatures higher than 40 degrees, the sewer and drainage division will clean the sewer mains adjacent to the problem area. Immediately following cleaning, the sewer and drainage division will video and inspect the mains to determine if the collection system has a defect or issue which is the cause of the release of untreated affluent. If no collection system, co 
cause is found, we will then be implicating additional groundwater sampling downslope of two septic systems that may be contributing to the area issue. So it makes it sound like these two septic systems have been identified. If the additional groundwater sampling determines that the source is the two residential septic systems, then a written request to inspect the septic systems will be prepared and sent. The letters will be presented requesting an inspection date at least seven days out from the date of the, of the letter. If the septic systems are found to be the source of the untreated affluent, then we may need to direct the property owners to connect to the town sewer collection system under Ordinance 46406-3B. If the septic systems are not a cause of the release of untreated affluent, the area of investigation will be needed to expand and a new action plan determined. I mean, what's this all about? Northampton has periodically over the years, because they have no public sewer, mm -hmm. had difficulty with septic systems that were leaching and, and, and uh, not being not taking care of themselves properly in accordance with their design. And they've been tracing those down. They still have material that's coming downstream, which goes out through uh, the area where that the, the, the brook is at Northeast Lane that goes out and uh, takes care of that cove that's up in there and drains in and out. There appear to be some contamination, uh, which could be from a septic system, we don't know that yet because there's, there's currently ice up there. Within Hampton. Within Hampton, maybe. But don't why know. aren't the places in Hampton not connected? Well, like, you don't. Do they get the choice? Uh, if they're a certain distance from the, 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 the primary sewer, they do. And there was, when the primary sewers were installed up there, they gave some people a choice to connect or not to connect. So some, there are at least two that we know of that are not connected. That doesn't mean that there aren't others that have separate septic systems for other things that may occur, for instance, for washing machines and things of that nature, which may be connected to sanitary waste as well in a backyard. Uh, but everybody else up there is supposedly connected to sewer. So as soon as the weather breaks and we can get into the ground, uh, we'll be testing behind these residences to see whether or not there is contamination coming from them. If there is, we'll work with those residents to solve that problem. Well, I'd like to know how this compares to the uh, of the thing that goes across the marsh that seems to be such a big deal that the town of Hampton should have to pay $5 million for when uh, the whole town of Northampton doesn't even have to do anything and they can discharge theirs all over the place. And I don't understand why we don't force our people to be connected to the sewer system. Well, those decisions were made by prior boards of selectmen, well, not by this board. I think we need to look at it. Well, we are. We're going to investigate it to find out what's it really going no on. It makes no sense to me at all to read a letter like this. And, and then we'll have Chris in with the report on it. I mean, after yeah. he, after the testing has yeah. been done and, and everything, and then we can make a decision. I definitely want to know how much of this is compared to what's growing across the marsh. And not that we even have a problem anymore. <clears throat> we don't. We probably won't for another 40 years, but or longer. this is ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. We all finished with the town manager? Okay. Uh, <laughs> we're finished. We're finished. Deal, <laughs> we are investigating that. Old we business. We'll find out. Deliberative session assignment of motions and seconds for Warren articles. Oh, yes. Okay. So election of officers. I don't think so. Okay, we go down to Article 7. Oh, 7. Bond. Okay. Bond. Motion by... I'll do it. Okay, Regina. Second by. I'll do it. Rick. Budget. That's the budget committee. Yep. Uh, Reconstruction Lafayette Road. I'll do it. I'll second it. Local 633, uh, Phil, because you negotiated those or? As you order, sir. Second, who? I'll second. Oh, okay, you know. I'll second. <laughs> Rusty. <laughs> uh, same in 33017. Three, oh, Bill? Yes, sir. Rusty? Sure. And should we go the same thing with 1984? Be consistent. Be consistent. Okay. 
EPW trash trucks. Now, there will be an amendment to that. Okay. They want the moderator suggested we, we include the word trash in there so it's more self explanatory. Okay. So, I'll so make a motion. Okay, okay, second. I'll second it. Highway block grant. I'll do it. Second, Rick. Yeah. Road improvements. I'll yeah. do it. Rick. I'll second. Second, Regina. Human service I'll agencies. Do it. Rick. I'll Re second. Regina. <laughs> Uh, Recreation SRF, Rusty? Sure. I'll second it. IT upgrades? I'll do it. I'll second it. Uh, Beach Street Lighting? I'll do it. Rick? Second? Sure. Rusty? Uh, study flooding issues? I'll do it. Rick? Okay. I'll second it. Regina? Uh, police forfeiture, SRF, I'll do it. I'll second it. Rick will second it. Kings Highway drainage. I'll do it. Rick. I'll second it. Regina. FD fire department pickup truck with plow. Sure. Rusty. I'll, I'll second sec it. Okay, right. Regina will second it. DPW vehicle purchase. Rusty, I'll second it. I'll do it. Sidewalks, Side Rick. <laughs> I'll, I'll second it. Regina will second it. <clears throat> Assistant town clerk. I'll do it. Regina, second. Sure. Rusty. Paralegal. Do that. Bill. Regina. Sure. Sewer study. I'll do it. Rick. I'll second it. Conservation fund. Sure. Rusty, I'll second it. Historic structures. I'll do it. Rick. I'll second. <clears throat> Regina. Uh, door replacement. Sure. Rusty, I'll second it. Um, HHW collection. HH Hazardous waste, I'll do that. Uh, I'll second it. Regina. Harbor dredging. I'll do it. Rick, I'll second that. Keno. I'll do it. Rick, second. He's a gambler. Second. Second. Rusty. Veterans credit. I'll do it. I'll second it. Amend entertainment. That's the selectman's ordinance. Oh, yeah, I'll do it. Rusty, I'll second it. Uh, town forest bylaws. I'll do it. Rick, second. I'll second it. Lease land deed modified. Sure. Is that the okay? So that's a petitioned article. Yes, petitioned article. Okay. I think yeah. Yeah. So we stop there. The rest there. of these are petitioned. I think you stop there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then we're all set on that. Works for me. Okay. Utility plants removal re relocation of overhead electrical infrastructure, Lafayette Road. Do you want to talk about that? I can. <coughs> Excuse me. The uh, Public Works Department, I was present, met with uh, the representatives of Unitel. This is in regards to the $300,000 last warrant article, last the, uh, the last... Uh, item on the warrant last year. Uh, they provided us with five possible plans. Uh, and they're just simply drafts. These are not final plans. Um, 
uh, options one, and I think we gave you plans for all these, 1A, uh, 2, 2A, and 3. Uh, they all do various different things to try to get the lines off of uh, Lafayette Road uh, and either bury them underground or run them behind the buildings uh, to the rear or along the railroad track to the rear. Um, this is just the beginning of the process. We have to look at the other utilities that are involved. That includes uh, the telephone company and the cable company. And uh, the, the group is efforting with them uh, now that we have a preliminary plan of possible alternatives. Uh, they gave us some possible costs, which I think you've all seen. Uh, and, and quite frankly, they're, um, they're guesses at this point because we don't know exactly what this is going to cost at this point. Um, I will tell you that they did tell us certain things. Uh, if they're going to go underground in the town to be required to do all the digging, uh, all of the duck lines would be encased in concrete for the entire length of the duck line, including services to houses, uh, so they can't be dug up and damaged accidentally. Um, that's all going to have to be factored in. Um, all of the manholes, pull holes, cable splice joints, all that material, all of the infrastructure that's underground uh, in, in the form of vaults or con containers of some kind uh, are going to be the responsibility of the town to purchase and install. Once all the work is done, uh, the town will give a deed uh, for all the material to Unitel and they'll be responsible for its maintenance from then on. So uh, you have some preliminary indications of what that cost is. Um, I have a question. Do we have to do anything with this now? No. No, just for your advice that they're they're moving forward. I would rather deal with the waste water treatment plant now and not. Uh, I think that's probably a good idea. I mean, because if this, if this not, is this costing us any money right now? Well, other than the appropriation that it was, was made. It was already appropriated. Right. Yeah. Marcy, I'm sorry. You the, the only thing I, I, I think is we need, we still, like Fred said, we need to go to the uh, uh, Fairpoint, Comcast, yeah. and get what their, their proposals are too so we can have a better got a okay. point what this is yeah. going to be. Right. So, so can I mean, we just move on and leave this right now and just do nothing with well, it? I mean, is that fine with everybody? It's fine with me, but I also want to talk about uh, the uh, uh, the lawsuit. Okay, hang on one second. So I just want to get it on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and if I may just add, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, that it, it does have courses of action that were presented, and they are in the seven-figure dollar range. And yeah, uh, yes. every, everybody wants to make their section of town beautiful, and uh, um, th there are some substantial hits on this. And uh, I think you're, you're sagacious in suggesting we put it off for a while. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. There's still work to be done on this to give you the final figures. Okay. Coakley Landfill. Okay, uh, last week I presented to the board a draft letter to the uh, Portsmouth City Council as one aspect of dealing with the situation of yep. the PFC contamination in the uh, Aquarian Wells uh, to express Hampton's concerns, uh, especially in follow-up to yep. uh, presentations that have been made uh, on the 15th to the Portsmouth City Council. Uh, the Portsmouth City Council is going to be taking up the issue again on their meeting February 5th. They have several new members, and it appears from all news reports that the City Council is taking quite seriously uh, the issues of the uh, use by the Coakley Landfill Group of a lobbyist. Um, most recently, uh, the uh, City Attorney testified against some legislation being proposed to make the Coakley Landfill Group subject to the right to no law. Uh, Portsmouth pays 54% uh, of the expenses of the Coakley Landfill Group. And so uh, it, with the board's suggestions, I have uh, amended the letter that was proposed before, and this would be a timely time to, uh, to send such a letter if the board wishes. Yes, Mark, I think that the letter is excellent to go, but I wanted to add a couple things, if I may. I've been in heavy contact with uh, Representative Mindy Mesmer this weekend. As you know, the lobbyist was actually targeted at the bill she's working on. And 
I wanted to read a couple things that she notes on the Coakley Landfill Group, Portsmouth City Council, the EPA letter that was sent to uh, that was sent by the federal delegation, which she's thankful for, but uh, she felt that some of the facts are not fully understood and that the EPA is not being exactly forthright, that they need to be more data to act, and that it will say it will take up to two to five years. Now, I want to explain that Representative Mesmer is a hydrogeologist, and she brings a lot of uh, insight and knowledge that most representatives don't have. So I'm going to read a couple of emails, and then I also want to talk about a Portsmouth Herald article that was in the paper this weekend, and then I also want to summarize the bills that she's working on and how the Coakley Landfill Group and the Portsmouth City Council are trying to fight her in every which way possible to get those bills passed. <clears throat> so if you just listen to me for a few minutes, I'm going to give a little history, as she had given me this weekend. In 1994, a phased approach to remediation was proposed that would stop the flow of toxins from the site, I'm assuming this is the Coakley Landfill Group, the dump into surface water bodies and shallow bedrock that threatens water supplies of five towns. The plan proposed in 1994, including correcting what we know about already combined with possible expansion once deep bedrock information was obtained. The deep bedrock work was never done in the 1990s, more than 20 years ago. The EPA does not need to wait for several years for the results of the deep bedrock investigation to do something about toxins flowing from this site. They can compel the CLG to start the phased approach right now. The Department of Defense gave the CLG $5 million in the mid-90s to put this pump and treat system in. CLG never put the system in, and the taxpayers of the City of Portsmouth, among other responsible parties, will be asked to pay the Department of Defense back when the site is closed, according to Attorney Sullivan. Where has that money gone, and what is it used for? There is no need to wait several years without action when we can stop at least some of the toxins flowing away now. The state has already stated in writing that contamination is unacceptable, and the community agrees. EPA needs to compel action now. And then she's saying she's happy to answer any questions that anyone in the Seacoast community would have. Best Mindy. Now, in regards to the Portsmouth Herald that was in the paper on January 27th, this is about Portsmouth City Count Attorney Robert Sullivan having appeared at the legislature to testify against the bill that seeks to make the Coakley Landfill Group, now going to call it CLG, subject to the right to know law. There is some significant case law from the New Hampshire Supreme Court that could be pointed out on this issue. Okay? So an important point that appears in this article, which is you bring it up in your letter that you're sending, and which is relevant to us sending the letter, is the council on February 5th, 2018, is again going to be asked to address the Coakley CLG and what it's doing with this money, 54% of which of it comes from the city of Portsmouth. Now, the CLG is considered a private party, but if 54% of it is a municipality, in my mind, that would make it a public entity. So I'm briefly going to describe the four bills that she has presented or will soon be presenting and what EPA, DES, and the city of Portsmouth pretty much via the CLG group is trying to prevent. So we have HB 1799. This bill is intended to provide private citizens with access to the state contract rate for perfluorinated chemical blood testing that would be made available to citizens. The bill was opposed by New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services and the Floral Council. This is an economic justice issue. After emotional comments from a Republican member of my committee whose husband is dying from pancreatic cancer, whose business is located in Merrimack, the bill was retained for interim study instead of yielding in to op the opposition to kill the bill. This she's going to work on again this summer. Another bill, who she's co-sponsoring with Hampton Representative Rennie Cushing, HB 1701, was heard by the House Judiciary Committee last week. This bill would make the CLG subject to the provisions of RSA 91A, the right to know. The committee heard opposition from City of Portsmouth Attorney Robert Sullivan and their hired lobbyist. <coughs> the lobbyist was hired by CLG, the group of responsible parties, which received 63% funding from municipalities, specifically the city of Portsmouth. 
The sponsors believe this is a conflict of interest because the taxpayer money is being used to fund opposition to the very legislation meant to make transparent to the public efforts the thwart public health of the municipalities, protecting public health of the municipalities. The hearing resulted in a bipartisan support of our efforts to make activities of CLG transparent to the public. So this bill would require CLG to submit its records pertaining to the remediation of the site of the Copley Landfill Group. Another bill, HB 1591, was sponsored by Representative Mesmer. This would close the gap in our rules that would allow a private citizen to sue for exposure to toxins. This bill, much to the dismay of the House Judiciary Committee, myself and co-sponsors, was opposed by Mike Wimsat of New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, who claimed it would make it harder for them to negotiate with the polluters. And then HB 1766, which is on hold till late February, would require DES order parties responsible for dumping hazardous waste in Coakley to undertake certain remedial actions. So these bills, which to me seem should be implemented immediately, are being fought every way direction, and they are trying to make Representative Mesmer not know what she's talking about, and I would argue that she knows the most out of anyone of what she's talking about. So I just wanted to add all that, and so that hopefully everyone at home will realize how important this letter that we have going out is. Rusty? All set, thanks. Rick? Phil? Yeah, I, I, I have to weigh in on that. And you say that uh, um, Representative Mesmer uh, is being thwarted by state agencies, our good friends at the state on uh, citizens' rights to engage in torts uh, to protect themselves. You see that on, on other issues, uh, the state weighs in, and I'm sure they didn't give her a heads up that they were going to testify against her. And it's a rough crowd up there, and people uh, talk about uh, not getting on the beach. Uh, and you two gentlemen have been up there. and. Uh, The CLG has gone rogue uh, many, many years ago. Uh, this, of course, was uh, where I was at the night there was a meeting down the beach. And um, you take your hits, you take your hits, you sign up for this stuff, so be it. The important issue is that uh, as a member of the Cancer Cluster Investigation Commission that uh, um, Mayor Splane was there. And uh, he has taken up the clarion call, which I think has been led by Hampton in this board, Mr. Mr. Chairman, and uh, calling out that uh, obfuscation and that obstruction and that lack of transparency and that, uh, that lack of morality. And uh, when I spoke at that meeting uh, with Representative Mesmer, with many other women, uh, and Mayor, Mayor uh, former, former uh, Assistant Mayor Spillane spoke there, and then he took the time to go up to Concord. Uh, and his comments uh, that he blasts City Attorney Sullivan. Disgusting. Uh, that Disgusting, and, and uh, he's a he's a hero to me. And uh, there were there were there were dead children. This is one of 300 cancer clusters in the nation, and this is in a, in our backyard. And uh, I think it's the most important issue facing Hampton. We have other important issues, uh, and that's why I attended that meeting and informed everybody. Uh, but um, we have a well shutdown, well number six. Two. We have two wells shut down. One specifically for this issue, uh, and it's a crisis. And uh, we're not getting any help, and uh, anything we can do uh, to bypass the CLG. Uh, it's a fool's game to talk to uh, a city attorney, Sullivan, and the CLG. Their own Portsmouth City Council uh, doesn't know where the money has gone, if you read the uh, former assistant mayor's comments. I couldn't imagine being a selectman in this town and spending millions of dollars a, 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 on a venture and to a third party to another entity to represent your interest in, in a situation that perhaps is causing young children their lives and then not know where the money is. And then to have legislation um, that's been brought up uh, and then have the same organization say, uh, we're not, we're, we're not going to be subject to the right to know where taxpayer money goes. And I, I can't get that insanity through my head aside from the safety issue. Aside from the fact that we have a well shut down. So I, 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 I just, I still can't get that through my head. And our, our discussions now have to be, I would, I would say, and I, and I am thankful for our esteemed uh, town esquire, 
is that we deal directly with the Portsmouth City Council. And Northampton is also a PRP, is that correct? That's correct. And we're, we're done dealing with um, the charades and the, uh, the misogynistic practices of the CLG. That, that day is over. And, and I would say that anybody in Hampton that, that speaks with me on the street would agree with that. And I think uh, everybody at this board would. Uh, that Mr. Sullivan is not a master of the universe. He is a city attorney. This is a flawed practice. Minnie Messner um, has done great work. You have done great work. And so going up to this, this, uh, this effort up there, I'm interested in hearing what the town manager uh, has to say about this. I'm interested in, in Mark's perspective on the letter. But again, uh, I specifically in my remarks um, a few weeks ago or last week, whenever it was, said that we're tired of the obfuscation, we're tired of the obstruction, uh, and quite frankly, we're tired of our, our well water being subjected to, to PFCs. And Portsmouth doesn't have any of these problems. And when the MBTE disbursement of funds came out, Portsmouth was right at the trough, and they received hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, and we got nothing. And again, um, it, it's a matter of common courtesy, and I spoke about this. If Hampton was a PRP, and Portsmouth had problems. I know darn well this board would be communicating directly. I know darn well the quality of the people and the leadership in this town would not assign this to a city attorney uh, to, to make up his own rules. And nobody's entitled to know where their money is. Okay? And they hire a lobbyist with their own money, not just Mindy Messmer, but the city and the people of Portsmouth. They're not entitled to, to know where their money is. And I don't know where Mr. Sullivan went to law school, but that's a really weird brand of law in the United States of America. Uh, and so um, as we all uh, face an election coming up, this is the most important issue in this town. There's other important issues. And some of people spoke about it in uh, public comment tonight in the wastewater treatment facility and the tort. But this is the most important issue. It's human life. It's human safety. And it's, it's our most vital natural resource besides oxygen. So uh, we can't say enough uh, uh, about how atrocious uh, the Portsmouth City Council has abdicated their responsibility. We can't say enough about how, how Northampton has abdicated their responsibility. Uh, and uh, you, you don't do that in America. You just don't do that in America. And, and we're not going to tolerate it. And so I wanted to, I wanted to back up um, Selectman Barnes in this course of action. I want to speak again to how important that issue is and it dwarfs any other interest for any other people coming from meetings in the town was this, this specific issue right here. And that's why it gets such great press play in terms of front page news uh, in the city of Portsmouth when that Mr. Spillane, and I think he's a hero, uh, to, to carry that trumpet call and that clarion call for this nonsense to stop. And now I want to um, go back to you, Mr. Chairman. I want to hear what the town council has to say. Uh, well, I would say that it's important. Uh, we could make changes to this letter, but whatever we do with it, it's important to get it out to the City Council this week so that the members have it before their meeting on next Monday. Um, there are three new members of that City Council, and so they, I believe, are hearing it in spades, what's been going on. And I, I, I think it's, uh, it just has not been on their radar screen, and that's wrong. It should have been. Well, but I now, a motion we send it. Good. I second it. All in favor? Um, I, I would say one other oh. item, though, if you don't mind. I think okay. it's important to have a presence at the next Monday night meeting of the City Council, just as Mr. Bean was there uh, last uh, on the 15th, uh, because uh, that, that's an important to reinforce what's said in this letter. I, I will be there as a member of the uh, commission, and I won't speak for the board, but I will speak uh, as a selectman, and I will speak as a uh, representative for the town of Hampton <laughs> and as a member of the uh, investigation, the Cancer Cluster Investigation Commission. Mr. Chairman. So okay. It's next Monday night? The 5th. So we've, and we, we took a vote, which was unanimous. Uh, I, did you? Yeah. No. Well, we'll yeah. do it again. Regina, want to make your oh, motion? We, I made the motion. Oh, okay. Regina, second. Second it. second it. All in favor? Opposed? Great, thank you. Okay, so that, that's that. All right. And I want to talk about the lawsuit. Yes, I know. I'm not cutting you off. Ready? Did you have, did you have anything to say about that? Yes. Um, uh, I mean, Rick, do you want to speak first? Do you want to allow? Well, I, one thing I want to say is I want to, I, I, this needs to be mentioned before we go into deliberative session. People are asking questions all, about it all the time. 
and um, I don't think that people really understand it. One thing I want to mention, and I thought of it this week, and I don't know why I didn't think of it before, but I can't quite remember the complete way it was, but and Fred might know. Um, we met with uh, Chris Sununu when he was governor's consul. I met, I believe, twice with him at the galley hatch at 7 o'clock in the morning with John Nyan and another selectman. Another day we met with, um, it could be one time, but I think it was twice, and it discussed about the 10-year plan and all of that. So John nyan has been involved with the 10-year plan for a long time. Um, and um, another time it was with Phil Bryce, and I know Ben Moore was one of the selectmen at least once, maybe twice. Um, and Phil at just happened to be at Kay's Cafe one of the days, so he was a witness to that. Um, but I can't remember for which one. But um, I think that we need to announce that there is going to be a delay because of, it's just not quite ready yet because of the um, uh, deliberative session. But... Um, I think that uh, you know this <laughs> illustrates you know that he's just continues to talk with John Nyan when John Nyan isn't even uh, you know he's a, 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 a private citizen now and why isn't he coming here and now he has I think we should give him an invitation to come here and talk to us about it before February 14th when we plan to file this suit. If he wants to talk, he needs to talk to these people, not play to the business people at the beach, where they're the ones that were all invited to show up, not the Board of Selectmen. And I think that we should send a letter to him inviting him to come here. Maybe he can give up dinner again. Or like in the case when I gave up breakfast to meet at the galley hatch two or three times with people so that they could help us with the 10-year plan which my pipe section of it's been taken out uh, mm -hmm. where I live, where there's severe problems. And I, I just think this has gone on for a long time. I, I don't see we're getting anywhere when every time this is voted on, it's 23 to 1, 22 to 1, 21 to 2 <laughs> or whatever. I just don't see a, by a little chit-chat that he's going to do where he's had all these years to do it, he had probably more power when he was an executive consular. Why isn't he coming here to talk to us? Where we represent the citizens of Hampton, not just the business people. Rusty? And I want to point out it was a four to one vote. Uh, which vote? When we voted, yes, to instruct this okay. to happen. Okay, then I, and then I want to point out that I would go along with what Mr. Jones said, that I would, that I would, if the lawsuit's being brought up. Well, I don't up, think Mr. Jones wait, may I, knows. May I, may I speak? Yeah. I let you speak. Let me speak. All I'm saying is that he made a suggestion, and I would go along with his suggestion that we invite to have a meeting. That's what I would say. I've, That's I've my feeling. Well, I don't think Mr. Jones understands anything. I always feel that about Mr. Jones anyway. But the thing is, I don't think he knows what's gone on for, for years. Right. right. That's, this, this, I'm we've not been involved I, with this. Yeah, no, I'm and not I'd saying. like to see something happen instead of nothing. Yes, I agree 100%. And there's people up and down Ocean Boulevard that are very upset. Yes, I agree 100% with what you're saying. Especially when they pay their taxes to the town of Hampton. Yes, I agree, Mr. Bean. Okay, uh, can I bat up after yeah. uh, Selectman yes, Barnes, you please? Thank you, you sir. Want, okay. yeah. I just have a question. I just want to make a statement. I think Rick has a great idea, but unfortunately, I don't see that it's going to actually happen. No, of course it isn't. Right. You know, I mean, we've been trying to have this idea for how long? He'd rather play up to the people at the beach. Right. The and business people. All as I know is the people I talk to, they want this. Yeah. The people, the people that we sit at this table for, yes. they want it. They see what's happened, what's been happening, and we voted on this as a board, four to one, to do this. And we need a little more time, and that's fine. These things happen, but other than that, I have nothing more to add. 
If I could, Mr. Yep. Chairman, and uh, I, I understand your position uh, that, that you voted against that, and, and as such, uh, any reconsideration would have to come from the four that voted for it. And I would just say things got a little heated last week, and uh, um, it went up after the, our meeting last week. It was in the Union Leader and Beans Beach, and on and on and on and on. And, and uh, um, we're going to move up, we're going to move past that. And uh, there were some opportunities to. Um, share some ideas and, and it didn't work out as well and that's the way democracy works sometimes and uh, we're going to move forward uh, there, there is some delay that, that Mark has experienced not delay but the, the, this is so important um, that he needs a little extra time and he's going to explain that as Rick rightfully does but um, I was uh, um, uh, part of an interesting uh, phenomena a couple of weeks ago or last week whenever it was and uh, that's fine we, we all move past and uh, we don't hold grudges. And uh, I want to hear what Mark says, and then I understand there's, a, there's been a pushback that's unrelated to anybody's desire to push this back. Um, I don't want to speak for the town attorney, but that's what I've been told. And uh, I'm, I'm, after Mr. Bridal speaks and you speak, um, I'm interested in what Mark is going to tell us about when this tort is going to be filed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, first of all, I, where did the January 31st date come from? This board. It's nowhere in our minutes. Actually, it was in your minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it came from this board, Rusty, to answer your the question. The board asked for a date. That was the date. But it was nothing we voted on. No, no. It, was just, it just came through right. the board. It's a consensus. That's right. exactly. It came through the board. And uh, I, personally, I want to make sure it, if we are going down this road that we have it right. So if the, if the, county, if the town attorney needs more time to do that and, and he needs more time to investigate it, then that's the way it should be. He needs to do it right. I agree. I think that summarizes it. <laughs> so it summarizes it. You know, my, you know, my position, I, my position would be to try and have a meeting. That would be my position. Well, I, stick, I would like to have a meeting I also. stick with that position to, it's not to send happen, out now. Okay. It won't happen. It won't happen. If it won't happen, if we don't ask. I, yeah, have we've what? asked so many times. Do you know how we've been asking for 14 years I've been here? It's never happened. They have never come here. Well, let's take a, a vote of the board whether we should ask for a meeting or not. For the umpteenth time, I'll make the motion. All right, I'll second it. All in favor? Three up against? Two. So we will ask the town manager to ask for a meeting. We'll do that, sir. To discuss the lawsuit. Uh, we didn't have any discussion on that. Well, we're not going to discuss the lawsuit. No, no, no. no. When well, we had that, we had, we had that, we had that vote. We didn't have any discussion, and I'd like, I'd like to have. Oh, not, okay. Not so. I would like to hear the town attorney. A l last meeting that was scheduled, and, and 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 I'm over it. I'm sure the governor's over. It. We all have. I'm we all, all. I'm all ready. I'm all for mediation of some type. Can can all and, for it. Can it I, I, the yeah, I, w I would just say this is that uh, we, we had a meeting and uh, it turned into the Barney Fife show. There was no agenda. Um, it, it, it was chaos. And uh, for the governor to come down here um, without an agenda to speak about something that's a tort, um, the governor has no power in Concord. He can't print money. Any expenditure over five thousand dollars, the governor's council has to approve. He can't make laws. He can't write laws. He has to come and call legislators like you used to be, like he called me before um, this meeting and wanted to know my positions on various laws. Um, but he he has no power, and he can come here and talk all night long, and he can't do anything. And uh, after that hit parade, and I'm being very polite about it. Uh, that well is poisoned, my friends. And if you don't think so, go read the Beans Beach article that Grant Bossy, who was a long-term employee of the Sununu family, wrote and, and disparaged me and, and uh, used quotes of um, that I was a fool and that I was thin-skinned and that it was fake news and that this, again, is a long-term employee of the Sununu family. And if you think you're going to have a discussion with that, you're wrong. And then he said that there's three selectmen uh, that we're pushing for this meeting, Rusty. I guess you don't count because you weren't mentioned Four in the. To one. You weren't mentioned, but but in in the in the articles, and it was fake news. There was no mention of Mr. Bridal's vote on the position. It was Mrs. Barnes, it was Mr. Bean, it was Mr. Griffin, and uh, again, um, that well's been poisoned. It was on WMUR. It's online. Um, USA it, Today. It's and and if you think the governor is going to come down here, the powerless governor, and that governor's position in this state constitution was made this way, 
Okay? It's a powerless position, and he can come down and have meetings. His first meeting at Hampton Beach that I never attended, I, I read in the paper uh, online today, oh, Phil's a great guy. That's in, that's in the Hampton Union. There was no agenda to that meeting. It was one of his cheerleading expeditions. And then he comes down the next one, and um, um, I forget what it was. But that's okay. But if you think you're going to invite the governor to sit in this seat uh, and answer questions directly about what he's going to do outside of his powers that are constitutionally mandated in this state, uh, it's an exercise in futility. And uh, somebody please tell me um, uh, exactly how it's going to be improved over the last meeting. Somebody please tell me what the agenda is going to be, uh, who's going to attend. It'll turn into another circus. And I will tell you, the, uh, the effort the town has gone on for all of these years uh, to produce this data, uh, this is the town people's money. This isn't the Board of Selectmen's money. <clears throat> this isn't um, Governor Sununu's money. This isn't uh, um, the Budget Committee's money. This is taxpayer money. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some legislation up there with uh, Rennie Cushing's bill coming back for 15% of uh, pension contributions. We're going to talk about uh, uh, the well that shut down well number six. You know, maybe, maybe if Governor Sununu wants to come down and actually speak to people that provide $200 million to his revenue camp, $200 million and gets free police service and free fire service, and you see we've, we've got to come up with this new uh, um, $13 million expenditure that is state facilities that provide us 9%, that provide his state parks uh, sewer system, that provide the refuse station. If the governor wants to come down and expand that debate, great. Because I'd like to speak to him sitting here without, without uh, a chorus and without uh, the entourage. And I'd also like to ask him, what's he doing about well number six? What's he doing about Coakley? He's remained on the fence on that, silent. He's AWOL on that. He hasn't showed up. I'm horrible because I go to a meeting up here in, in Portsmouth to defend this town's interest. And uh, I get it. Both barrels. And... Uh, What's, where, what's he done on Coakley? You, know, if you want to have the governor down here? Let's talk some real meat on the bones. Mr. Governor, what are you doing about Coakley? We've got a six million dollar, or six million gallon well shut down. We almost didn't make uh, our production needs last summer. What are you going to do, Mr. Governor, if uh, we shut down the beach because the toilets can't be flushed, Mr. Excellency? Let's have, if you want to have a meeting on that, let's talk about those salients. And what are you doing to protect our children? Two of which uh, up the road, are now dead. And why don't we get any MBTE money? And where are all these great architects of the interest in Hampton, like Mr. Nyan, putting forth these comments? I don't hear them. I don't hear them from the people who work behind the scenes. I don't hear these. They're silent. It's just like, no, we got to get along. You just heard of Minnie Mesmer get sabotaged in legislative agendas up there. And I've had it happen. And Mr. Waddell, you and I worked on pollution control exemptions, and they come out of nowhere. They do a placeholder. They don't give you the courtesy of a heads up. And that's the way Concord runs. And you can have the governor come down here. But if he's going to come down and sit here, he's going to answer some of my questions, some of the townspeople's questions. And uh, that'll be on the agenda. What are you doing about these dead children? And what are you doing about our cancer in our water? And what are you doing about uh, that situation in Portsmouth where um, a rogue unit has suddenly co-opted the Constitution? And uh, they don't account to anybody. And they hire lobbyists that are all hanging around the flagpole like they all do. And we have problems. So if you want to have a meeting um, and he agrees to it, send him a copy of this tape and this video, um, and what I want on the agenda. And he can sit right in that seat, just like I sit in that seat, and we all sit in the seat and we take it. Um, and uh, it's not going to work. And it's a powerless position. And I will be up there listening to his State of the Union, or State of the State, um, this, this next couple of weeks. But I think I've got a better picture on the state of the state based on the governor's performance last week in Hampton than he does. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right. Can I just say something, yeah. Rick? My suggestion was to negotiate with the state. It was not necessary to have the, the governor here. My suggestion was to come up with an agenda and negotiate with the state. I'll just make that point so that's very clear on the very specific issue of the beach. Go I ahead. voted to send a letter to invite the governor here. That's what I thought I voted. For. Okay, well then let's let's yeah, let's let, change I, it. All right, I, I will. Be, I mean, I'm okay. Worried. I will be very clear with what I'm yeah. doing, and then we can we can vote. All right, 
I make a motion that we try to negotiate with the state over this issue before going to court. That's that's you my cannot, motion. You cannot make I'm a, a point of that. order. You you voted against this. You cannot. Yeah, you can. and, and I, cannot, and I you cannot, cannot. You cannot. All right. I'm if not, you vote against this, make can. a motion and come. You I can't. just said I'm not going to. I, okay. I'm sorry, but, Mr. Chair. But the, the only thing I will say is we don't operate under Robert's rules, Mr. Ch Town Manager, correct? That is correct, sir. You've never adopted Robert's but rules. But I will accept that Robert's rules have that, and I will accept what you just said. But, but, but I can make that. You can make a I motion. can make that. And I think w while we have this opportunity, while the, uh, the town attorney is still trying to get all his ducks in a row, that if we, can get the, if we can get them to come down and talk about the problems that we've discussed. Who? Who? Either the... I want to see the, the he, governor. I'd, I'd rather see governor's council he first of all. came down here. But I'd rather see governor's council. But if, if it's the governor that comes down, fine. And we're going to talk about the problems that we've had at the beach and what he has brought up, specifically yeah. about the money stuff. Okay. And let me say one thing. Wait, now, he, he made a motion. Do we have a second? We, no, we're not going to discuss it. Do we have a second if we're going under Robert's rules? Well, it's going to be ruled out because I'm not voting. Okay, well, I'm just saying if we don't have a second. I like his idea, but I'd but, like to have a discussion well, first. Well, then we have to have a second. So I have a second for discussion. I'll have a second for discussion. Okay, let's open it but for discussion. The thing is, uh, the, what has happened over and over and over again, and everybody here knows it, and if you don't, you haven't been paying attention is they have never allowed anyone to come because they won't have two of their people come and sit here because they cannot make any decision and they don't want to be abused. But yet they can ab abuse the Board of Selectmen. And that is what is disgusting about this problem. And that's and, why I said, well, if well they have them down here. Well, they abused us all, but they will not have their people. So yeah, I'll make a motion. Uh, I'll go to have the people come here. But guess what? They won't. Well, then that's that's up to them. At least and he I made would us... rather see the governor come. That's he only, fine. He could just miss dinner. We can even have the meeting start a little later till he's finished with dessert. That's so you made a motion. Yep. You seconded it. We had a lot of discussion. Does anybody want to continue the discussion? Oh yeah, we're going to continue this discussion. I, I think... Okay. I would like to say something. No, I just lost my train of thought. But um, so we're going to invite the people that we're filing suit against to come here to not file the suit. No. No. Okay, because we're not going to talk about the suit, right, when he is here. Because that has been town council's advice to all of us. We want right. to talk about the boulevard of broken dreams where people's lives are being ruined because nothing's being done. Chris Sununu has talked about this the whole time he was executive council. That's the thing that all these people don't know. This is not anything new. This has been talked about and talked about and talked about it, and I was a member of the Hampton Beach Air Commission, and then they just, at the last minute, take it out. Now they say they're putting $275,000 in, and blah, 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 and nothing's happening. <laughs> People are getting old and they're dying. Right, and I, I'm sick of, worrying, of, of being part of this. And I that's agree. why we have to move on. I agree. But if someone wants to come down, and it doesn't have to be a lawsuit as far as I'm concerned. It could be some type of mediation. But if no one ever comes to talk, there's nothing happening. Exactly. But they won't come anyway. And why, if he could come down there and grandstand down there, like his father, um, why can't he come here? Yeah, and I also wanted to add, too, about how he completely sabotage Bean, who makes $3,100 a year being a selectman and a state rep. Plus mileage. Oh, plus mileage. And that's completely, to do that to an elected official who's doing this out of the goodness of his heart and for his town and for his state is completely wrong. And now he wants, now we're going to make nicey nice with him and invite him here to talk because we're going to file suit on the state in two weeks. I just, I agree with you, Rick. I would I think it would be awesome if he would come here. But if he does come here, it's going to be for the wrong reasons. Yeah, uh, and my, my, my point of discussion is um, the governor can talk to a judge. That's where this is at. That's where this board is voted. Governor, just like the people that we talked about last week that are down at um, the beach that were run over, and his A-team that authorized the design where women were almost killed, um, their liability carrier is going to be writing a check worth millions and millions of dollars. And uh, 
That's where we're at. And aside from all the, you know, th th that, that fiasco, there wasn't a meeting. Um, where the, the governor and all his experts, just like the people did um, from the contracted out there, and just like the state agencies and just like the town had people um, uh, talk, you can speak to a judge. And they can, they, can, they can work for their money. And instead of coming out to sabotage uh, legislation from local people, these, uh, these people that don't want to give people the right to sue if they, they're, they're being, uh, they have pollution uh, challenges, state agency directors and heads come out against that. They support this uh, CLG thing. Um, game on. Governor of the state of New Hampshire, this board has voted, Mr. Chairman. And this wasn't something that was done over a couple of weeks. I came into this board and started this process in 2012. You sat in my office and we talked about revenue with a bunch of other legislators. 2012. This isn't something that was just willy-nilly brought up. And uh, it's been six years. It's going on seven years. The town council has been doing his work. And then we're going to get stuffed um, because people that have no expertise in the tort arena. This board has none. I have a little. Our, our business is about that, but I'm not an attorney. And then exactly what expertise is this board going to provide to talk to a governor that has no authority to give us any money? Governor has no authority to make any attachment of the state funds for this town. He has no authority. He has no power. He has none. So why would we waste our time? Maybe he herds cats better than most people. Well he, did, well, he can't write a check, and that's what this is about. And we've talked about the fact that this amount of money that Mr. Welch and his staff have, have developed is the tune of about $10 million in bonded project. $10 million. And to me, if you're paying five grand, do the math. That's thousands of people that are paying their taxes. And if anybody on this board thinks that they can short taxpayers in this town, their money, and disenjoin them from the fruits of their labor because Governor Sununu says he's got to do something for us. Um, you're, you're not living up to your, your responsibilities as a selectman. That's my opinion. And uh, we have no right. A fireman, the captain, I listen to you all day long about, about fires. I'm running a small business, I got a little experience. We do whatever our professions are. But that's the expert right there. Seacoast Media Group has opined that it should be in front of a judge. This board has voted that it should be in front of a judge. And that out on the street, the people in this town, there's some people that disagree, Mr. Chairman. Um, and I'm the one that was blind, so I'm, I'm going to talk about this. The people that work behind the scenes, those people, you've heard what Rick has said about Mr. Nyan. They have no authority to, to advocate directly to the governor. I don't talk to the governor. He was former lines of communication. He was former lines of communication when I talked to people in this town. And if I happen to talk to the public works director, I make sure the chief executive, Mr. Welch, knows and the chairman knows. Knows exactly what it's about. That's open and it's honest. And so for the, for the, for the governor to come down here um, in a meeting uh, and talk to him uh, about things that he can't do, that he hasn't done, that he never will do, is a waste of time. And when you're out on the street, you know, and people come up and go, um, geez, you're walking away from... Uh, $10 million of bonding capacity because you want to talk to a politician. A politician. He doesn't make $100 a year. I do. You did. You did. He doesn't make $3,000 a year. I don't get chauffeured to Concord. He gets chauffeured. He's got a state trooper. <laughs> You're going to talk to him? Have fun. Maybe people here talk to him. You know, they got his number. I've heard that. I talked to the governor. Well, I know how he talked about me. And I have no faith in people that negotiate like that. Zero. No faith in their credibility. No faith in their ethics. No faith in their common decency. And that's out of Selectman Barnes's um, corner tonight. That, that a, a, an official that's over there that the town attorney thinks is important gets maligned. So if you guys can have your vote, you can talk about it all day long. There's a vote on behalf of the people in this town that's been a six year process. And the board should feel very proud of it. And if you think you're going to negotiate with a politician that has no power to do anything and offer any remedy, um, it's, a, it's a sad mistake in, in, uh, in governance. And, uh, Rick, oh, I'm, gonna, sorry. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm not done. So I'm I, sorry. I just, and, and, and if we're going to have a meeting with a governor, 
um, when he came down here last week, uh, no one ever produced an agenda. Uh, when, when, when millions of dollars of payroll and benefits sits down at a meeting like was conducted at a state facility, um, any professional organization I've ever been involved with, there's an agenda. There's an agenda every single time we meet. There's an agenda on every planning board, every conservation meeting. Where, where is the agenda for that? And so who's going to have the agenda? And I will tell you, uh, if the governor's coming here, I wanted to include uh, information on Coakley and why he hasn't done anything. I want uh, an information basis on why Portsmouth received MBTE funds. Did you ever get a phone call, Mr. Welch, from Concord on an MBTE? No, sir. Did anybody on this? Well, no, no. I'm, 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 did, people okay, you asked a question. Can I answer the question? He, he just said no. I talked I to Russell Prescott, and he he called the uh, he called the town office. Russell Prescott is on is an executive counselor, on because you sent an email asking about that. I immediately made a call. Okay, but but did Mr. Welch get a phone call? No, I didn't talk to him. No. Okay, okay. That's that was my question, Mr. Chairman. He may have talked to somebody else. But he didn't talk to me. Okay. I, I asked that the governor call because you know again we've got a six million dollar well shutdown. Yeah. I know if I'm the governor, and this is Hampton. There's 200 million juice coming out of here, and that's Hampton Beach, the crown jewel. Right. I hear that there's a six, mil six million gallon well down. I'm not. I'm getting in my chauffeur driven state trooper limousine, and I'm coming down here, and I want to know what the heck's going on, and get Eversource on the phone, and get Aquarian on the phone, and get them in here right now. And this is a huge problem. Oh, and there's two children that are, that have died. The governor's addition to the Seacoast Cancer Cluster Commission was to uh, nominate a, a, a politician, a person that ran for a, a, an office, and his, his behavior in, in, in his meeting was insane. The governor had to yank him. He, he terminated his own appointment from the Seacoast Cancer Cluster Commission while he was still talking. It was the most god-awful thing I've ever seen in my life in front of a mother that lost a child. These are the kinds of things I'll be happy to speak to the governor about, and I've been in the governor's office. I went up there, and I went up there after that dog and pony show down the beach. And I said, his door was right here. He, he didn't call up and say, geez, Phil came up to the office. Geez, Phil notified us. You know, so um, you guys rock on and play your game. But I'm not backing down from the governor. I'm not backing down from the Sununu family. I'm from the Bean family. I'm from Hampton. There's millions of dollars at stake on this. And I'm not talking to a politician that's demonstrated that type of, of uh shall we say, incompetence, and I mean this, and I'm not going to be rushed about this, because my name is all over the papers in the capital city. My name is, Mr. Chairman, not yours, no one else is mine, that the Bean, the Bean family is a fool, and not, no one else has that in, in here, and I'm just simply a public servant. Nobody and, uh, said the Bean family was a fool. Well, well, I'm part of the Bean family, and, and, and please Nobody don't interrupt, please don't, in, please don't interrupt me. Just, Please don't interrupt I'm just me. A okay. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, we're we're pretty tight knit at the Bean family, just like Hampton people That's are. That's good. You don't. You're done right. It's good. Now, please let me have the floor. Okay. So if this is coming down um, for next, uh, whatever you people schedule with this politician, um, it's going to be expanded. And uh, in terms of your your meeting, uh, as a as a representative, and as a selectman, I'm going to be asking the governor if he sits right there in that chair like we do. And like under your leadership, you do, Mr. Welch, and we, we or Mr. Uh, Waddell. We're gonna have these. Uh, we're gonna have these questions. Okay, dead children. What are you doing about it? Six million gallon well down. What are you doing about it? What have you done about it? Where's our MBTE money? You know, do you think you owe the town an apology for that fiasco that you executed last week? So if you want to bring them down here, these are the kinds of questions I'm asking. Okay, and the the suit's going on the 14th. And it's going on Valentine's Day. So inform the governor, people that are connected and run things behind the scenes. Tell them that's, that's the kind of questions I'm asking. And bring his press officer, and maybe he can call me some more names. Okay? But uh, that's what's going on. And I'm a duly elected official in the town of Hampton. I'm a Hampton selectman. I'm a Hampton state rep. I'm a New Hampshire native. And like I say, I've got more government service than the governor of New Hampshire. Okay? And... Uh, he can bring uh, Grant Bossy down, the guy that uh, does the fake news, his long-term long uh, family employee. Bring Grant down, the guy that called me on the phone and already had his op-ed article written, and then uh, just checked the box. And I called Grant Bossy up, just like I went back up to the governor's office. And I asked Max about it, his paper, when I called out all these fake news. But I called Grant on the phone. 
I said, Grant, you know, when you, when you called up and, and punched the ticket about just making the phone call, because you already had your editorial written, I said, uh, this was last week I called him. I said, you didn't tell me that uh, you've worked for the Sununu family for years and years and years, and you've been on their payroll. And you didn't tell me that your wife is in their employer as a staffer. And uh, I'll ask Mr. Sununu that. And it's funny, it, it, when I said that I would be discussing this on the Monday Night Selectman show, that that very next day when I go to Concord to have a discussion with the Speaker of the House about this challenge down here, and he said, go, go for it. I wanted to make sure there was no problems. Uh, I'm informed that um, Beans Beach uh, is in the Hampton Union or, or the uh, Manchester Union, the center op-ed, center op-ed from Grant Bossy, the longtime political let's put it politely, employee of the Sununu family that now, uh, unlike the Portsmouth Herald and the Hampton Union, um, engages in fake news. So I want that on the agenda when he comes down. And uh, I'm just getting started. And, and then why would he call me when there's dead children and we have our town attorney, and I'd like the town attorney to be here um, to say, um, you know, Mr. Bean was over at uh, the uh, Portsmouth City Council. And uh, it's the front page news on the Portsmouth Herald. And it's one of the most, it's the most important issue facing our town. Why did you call him? I forget what he even called me. What did he, what did he call me? Are you, he's really not here? What, the governor? Yeah, when I wasn't he there. He was appalled you weren't there. He's, yeah, my, appalling. From some 44-year-old um, member of a political dynasty. Yeah, I'll ask him that question. Country. So um, I, I can go on here for another hour on what, what I want to ask him, but um, if that's on the agenda, um, I will not be stifled. And uh, these are the kind of questions that he's going to get from me, the Bean family, um, to the Sununu family, and uh, is a duly elected public servant. And uh, I'll just walk across the street from my house. I won't get chauffeured by a, uh, a state trooper. And uh, I don't care if I miss dinner. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Thank you. I would just like to point out that when, uh, when the meetings I'm talking about, John Nyan was the chairman of the Hampton Area Commission, and that's why we were meeting. And John was doing his best to get something to happen. And no matter how hard John tried, really nothing's happened. And now John represents the, all the business people at the beach. But you know what? I'm a business person at the beach that has a business there for 45 years, working six days a week for the last three years and seven days a week for the previous 42 years and I can't use the front door of my business and I think it's disgusting. I agree 100 percent. Let me just ask one question. I don't know how John Nyan came into this conversation. I brought it up that we met with him before. Well that was before but he has nothing to, to do with want, this right now. I want uh, Citizen Jones to know that a lot more goes on okay. than what's in his little yes. world. Okay. Can we take a vote? What? What is the, what's the uh, thing? I want, if, if what this lawsuit is about is the money that we feel the state owes us, and that's what I want the governor to come down and talk about. The rest of the stuff, don't get me wrong, Phil, you, you're bringing up a lot of good points, but why have to bury it with all a bunch of, I don't call them, for lack of better minutia, why not? If, if we want him to come down here, if we think, if that's what he said he could do, why can't we do that? Well, you asked the question, I'll answer it, because constitutionally he has no, no authority. So you don't need to go back to eighth grade to figure that out. He can come down here and say anything he wants. He has no authority to give us any money, period, zero. He has none. It's got to be approved by the council, or it's got to go through the legislature. Can't that's do it. That's the problem. Okay, so, so, so you're, asking, you're, you're, you're asking that. So what, what is the point of him coming down here? Well, give him a chance. Did you did you want to mediate or just have the governor come down? If we if we're mediating about <coughs> our potential, what this suit is about, then yeah, if we can do that, that's fine. Packing all this that's, other that's stuff a, that's on. That's a different motion. You call for a meeting. Now you're talking mediation. This thing is getting as undisciplined as the meeting where I was had my character maligned by the governor and his excellency. Yeah. So it's it's gonna it's uh, and I'll tell you, Mr. Chairman, we're on a good track. People have had their say. I've expressed legitimate concerns about this town. Um, do what you want, but it will be a fiasco if he comes here, just like the other one was a fiasco. 
and you said it was ill-conceived, this will be even worse. No lawyer in the world would tell you to have a meeting with someone that you're going to be engaged in a tort. There will be discoverable issues. Mr. Gerald has sent out the email. Each and every one of you received it when you held your meeting, Mr. Chairman. Do not discuss the tort. I did not, uh, I did not hold any meeting. Well, you're the chairman of this board, and you agreed to the meeting. I, I didn't agree to it. So, I, somebody agreed no, to it, and you're the chairman. An chairman has power, that's, so. That's a dead a, end a, a, cha a chairman has the power to, you, you call a meeting, people go. Okay? I mean, I didn't call it. I somebody didn't call a it. meeting. Well, somebody agreed to it. You represent the town. I didn't agree. I, I went to a meeting. I'm not going to argue that. That's foolish. Yeah, you can't. So back, back to the point is... Um, uh, I can't. I can argue. I could. Well, you just said you weren't going to. So now it's like can you I said you're not going mean, to. And then you're going to make a snide comment. I would like to ask. Yes, go ahead. Something. So um, when you are, does mediation? You can't. I know that when we deal with, um, like for instance, the labor issues. Um, when do we mediate? Before or after? It's a. Well. What we're talking about here is a, a broad range of issues mm -hmm. that span not only funding, but questions of responsibility that the state has shirked for years, going back mm -hmm. to 1933. And what happens when any lawsuit is filed in the Superior Court is that at a structuring conference that's held shortly after the case is filed, a mediation is at least brought up. Will there be a mediation? What form would the parties like to conduct it? So that will come up very early on. And I can say to you that um, most parties to litigation do engage in an attempt to mediate once they understand each other's positions. After the lawsuit's been filed. After the lawsuit's okay, been filed. Okay, then that's where I'm going to have to go because I'm all for that happening. I think that makes perfect sense. but. I don't see anything happening, and frankly, I'm sick. I'm, uh, so many people that are involved here are going to be dead before anything happens, yet they're not going to be dead fast enough to probably pay another five years of taxes and have nothing happen after they've paid the last taxes for the last 20 years and had nothing happen. I mean, you should look at the sidewalk in front of my house, and to think I have a business there, it's been patched over so many times, and I pay over $9,000 a year in taxes. It's ridiculous. Babies have to go out and go in the fast lane to get by the puddles. It's just ridiculous. I'm so sick of discussing with my people that come into my business. Don't, can't you do anything? Last week, three people came on last Tuesday after the selectmen's meeting, just walked in to my business and said, can't you do anything? I'm afraid we're going to lose our cars again. And, I'm think, and I said, listen, this is a state issue. I always tell him to call Mr. Welch, but that the, the water in the road last week was eight inches, and Kevin Schultz was one of them that was trying to go across it. How much, uh, also, with the way the water builds up in the streets, how much does that cost the taxpayers for uh, the um, town equipment that, like, Kevin Schultz was driving, or the fire trucks, or the police ca cars? I mean, it's ridiculous. And I, I look at them go but speeding through. I'm thinking, oh, my God, if that was my car, I'd never do that. But that's what the tax payers of Hampton are paying for. That's just one of thousands of things that we're not being. And I know that the reason why this is being delayed is because Mark is going through 85 years of abuse. Well said. Nice. So a vote? I guess there's no vote. Well, there was a motion in a, a second. There was in a second. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I, if we have to do the mediation after it's filed, I'm all for mediating. So you want to rescind your second? Yes. Okay, fine. fine. There's no vote. Uh, I'm sorry. Next on the agenda. Our, our old business. Anybody else get anything in, under old business? Old business? Okay. We'll go to dedication of annual report. Do we have anybody? <laughs> we had suggestions. Well, I would three names like previously. Charlotte Preston. Okay. Mark, nice job. And, you know, I'd also like to uh, Mark, consider uh, Arthur also. Who? 
Arthur, 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 I think it Woody. should be Arthur and Charlotte. It should be. It should, we have a couple long-time statesmen. Well, states well, people how about Paul Lassard? Yeah, There's that's Charles another Lassard. good third one. I'm sorry. We have another veteran who, who passed. Can we just one second? Can we go back to the names? I'm sorry, I missed it. Charlotte, Bob Lass uh, Paul Lassard, and uh, Arthur Moody. And we have a, we have another Marine who died who was a former selectman. Who's that? Uh, yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> My mind has been functioning what we're talking about. How about if we go look at, at see who some people are that have been... We'll give you some names. Yeah, right. long term. We'll do them tomorrow and send them to you all. Okay. I just don't want to miss somebody. There. Right. Yes, yes, absolutely. It would be nice to have even if, if, if these, these – and, and how about missile guy, Jerry? Was that Jerry, the yeah, yeah. Jerry's another one. So if we – even We have a, a number of, this year passed. I have a couple of pages of pictures. Okay. Yeah. We can do Jerry's that. a former um, also uh, uh, person that mm -hmm. was a member of a board. He was on the absolutely. budget committee. Yes. When and do he we – He was a person that did a lot. When do we have to vote on this vote? I would say by probably this Saturday. Yeah, so, let me, so let me get you to the list. We could do it before the deliberative session, yes, right? Yes, you can, or during it, at, you know, at okay. break or whatever. Okay. Let yeah. me get you a list of all the people who are, okay. we think I, are, I could just be don't eligible. I just want to get somebody. Okay. Because it's important. Good. Extension of the Comcast Cable Television Please. Franchise Please. Agreement. Please. Now, what? It expires on February 4th. Hmm. I've only been chasing them for three years. Okay, and they have not come back with something, or That's now they have because That's it's going to expire. Than usual, usually it's six years. Well, the, the contract's only five years long. Oh, <laughs> well, it took us six years last time. Yeah, I understand, but it, it was did. a fifteen-year contract. So, oh. if we extend, what are we extending? We're just extending extending the existing contract and going into negotiations. Going into negotiations, right? Okay. okay, I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Yes. We, have, we got things to sign then. Okay. We should extend it. Anything else under new business? Kind of crazy. I, I, I would just uh, add, Mr. Uh, Chairman, if I may, that uh, there is uh, a reconsideration of a Rainy Cushing sponsored bill uh, about contributions from the oh, state. Yes. yes. Are you up to speed on that, Mr. Welch? No, I'm not. Okay, I, I just heard about it this not evening. The number, but it, it is it is for 15 percent uh, reinstituting or, or an institution of that back to municipalities right. for pension costs, right. and that is a hugely significant. Uh, I remember originally event. when they started this, it was 35 percent. It's one of the biggest reasons 25 percent. Can we have that sign? It's one of the biggest reasons why we haven't been able to put on new employees. It's a because, huge problem. Because we, we're paying so much on that. So if the state can go back to what, if they go back to 15 percent, that would certainly help. It would. A lot. Yep. So, so when's that being heard? That's um, next time we're in session, so it's next week. Uh, but that's huge. And, and Rennie Cushing's great. He stood right up there, and uh, it was close. He got a reconsideration, so that's coming back, and uh, game on. It'll be exciting. Probably gave a whole bunch of people heart attacks just by bringing it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Anything else? God, God save us. Motion to adjourn? Yep. Okay. See you Saturday. See you. Yeah. Yeah, see see you everybody Saturday. Saturday. 21 25. Second, second, second. All in favor? Okay. Super. I can only stay to the